Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, June 24th, 2021. The time is now 7 p.m. I will call the meeting to order. Uh, first and foremost, it's nice to see everyone in person again after the COVID pandemic. Uh, we do have masks and hand sanitizer for anybody that is interested at the front of the room. Um, if you are interested in making a public comment, please be sure to sign in on the sheet at the front here. And uh, when you make your comment, please speak loudly and towards the microphone, that way the audio system picks it up. Um, the first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Since we're now back in person, I think it's prime time to resume doing that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is to approve the minutes of the May 22nd, 2021 workshop meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is the approval of the minutes for the May 27th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to approve the minutes of the June 19th, 2021 workshop meeting. They're not finished. I was going to say they're, they're not done. I didn't see them. Um, okay, so we'll uh, table that until the next meeting. Next is the treasurer's report. Uh, nothing unusual. Peter's informed me that down the road, if anyone wants to see a copy of the budget, um, uh, assembling a year to date type of analysis, um, and that should be available on the Google Drive. So if anyone wants to see where we're at with respect to the budget, they could just pull that up on the Google Drive. Um, other than that, I have nothing unusual to report as far as the bills go. Okay, and so we can provide a copy as well, standard right to know items, but yeah, it's, a, it's a couple yeah. of pages worth of printout yeah. that it's it's every single one of the codes of account with a, a year to date spend and percentage of the budget. We can email those. At yeah, and say, conversely, yeah. thank you, Jim. Do uh, We can also email it as well, really your preference. Uh, so next is to approve the payment of the bills for June 2021. I'll make a motion. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Uh, Sue, did we have any write-ins or call-ins throughout the, uh, the month? No, there were none. Okay. No, no silence. Okay, there are no public comments. We'll move into the items for discussion. First item, there was an executive session held after the May 27th Board of Supervisors meeting to discuss uh, a matter of possible litigation. This went from 8.34 p.m. to 8.51 p.m. There were no immediate actions taken. Next item on the agenda is the emergency declaration. This was made back in March 2020 at the Board of Supervisors meeting with a provision to extend for a period of time lasting until further action by the board. This was signed into effect on April 1st, 2021. We'll give the tractor a moment to go by. <laughs> And uh, this was related to Governor Wolf's COVID-19 emergency disaster declaration, uh, which has since ended on June 17th, 2021. This means fully virtual meetings are no longer permitted, uh, but we're doing a, a hybrid situation. We were returning to in-person meetings and we're keeping a, a Zoom component active both for recording so that people can do the meetings later on YouTube, or if they're unable to come to the meeting in person that they can still attend. At this point, we need to discuss if we still feel that we need, as Marion Township, that emergency declaration in force. Uh, we do not, as far as I understand, because the COVID uh, recommendations have been lifted according to the CDC guidelines. So um, we ask that if you're not vaccinated, that you do wear a mask indoors. Um, and there is hand sanitizer available. There's no seating res restrictions. There's no distancing restrictions. We just ask that on your own good honor that you help protect those in the community that are not vaccinated or immunocompromised that you do wear a mask. So unfortunately, there's many people in our community that have med multiple medical problems and uh, they need the protection. And I could say I am vaccinated, but I do currently have lots of medical problems. And that's why you're gonna see me wear a mask throughout until there is no cases in Berks County, so. Okay. 
So at this point, I think I personally am okay with rescinding the emergency declaration or, or making a motion to, to stop that state of emergency. Um, we can always, yeah, I'm say there it is. Did you catch that, Sue? No. Okay. Uh, I'll, Jim seconded that I'll make a motion to rescind or motion to end the emergency declaration. Jim, second. That is correct. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Will we have these on the, these meetings on the website mm -hmm. beginning now? Yeah, so the they're actually still being recorded the same way that when we were doing them fully telepresence. They'll still go up on YouTube and we'll have a link to the YouTube channel from our website. So whether you go to it on YouTube or go to it on the website. And is Zoom available still? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we actually That's have great. somebody from the community. Brandon Sweeney is actually on the Zoom call right now. That's great. So I wanna try to make it as available and inclusive for everybody as we possibly can. Absolutely. Next item is the Stonecroft infield. Uh, there, were, there have been some, some emails back and forth and a little bit of discussion. Um, and uh, we have somebody from McCarthy Engineering here to hopefully provide a little bit of insight when we have questions. But uh, Jim, you've been kind of the epicenter of that being a Stonecroft resident. Would you like to take us into it a little bit? I was at their meeting this morning. And uh, unfortunately, Jim's on vacation. So no one was there from McCarthy, which is a little disappointing. But uh, that retention pond or whatever you want to call it that they put in is not working. It's not functioning at all. And uh, consequently, there's water and there's mosquitoes. And I'd like to see that taken care of sooner than later. And I know how Landmark works. And you know how Landmark works. So my question would possibly be to the attorney, uh, is there any, first of all, do we have a bond on that project? I'm not even sure that we do, Peter. If it's an open project, we should. It should be bonded. Well, if it isn't bonded, we need to put one on it. And uh, and how can we get them to act on this a little quicker than their usual? Not to mention, what can we do if, like, I know the history on this, McCarthy Engineering actually advised against yes. the change to the infield. Uh, it was approved by one of the other agencies, which is the, the real requisite approval that was needed. Where do we as a township uh, have enforceability against if it's maybe designed a certain way, even if the design was approved by like maybe DCCD or some other agency, where if it is creating a hazard or is not functioning as designed, where can we get involved to remediate? Well, I talked with Jim this afternoon, and I know Dean from he's the one that wanted that. I guess when they have to do their uh, Renewal. He came up with that idea. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in the original approved plans. And I know Dean has said that they need to fix it, otherwise, the notice of termination would not get accepted, nor will we release any of the LOC until it is fixed. Dean was at the meeting this morning. It's my understanding that Dean is coming up with an alternative. Well, I don't know if he's coming up with an alternative. He, he stated this morning, he was at the meeting this morning. His statement was that it's going to take some time before this is taken care of. And then, and then, then when they say it's taken care of, there's going to have to be a couple significant drains to see if it's draining. Uh, again, I know how they, how, the Stone Group is very slow about everything. I don't want to see this go until next spring. So I don't know if there's a way to inspect that before we get a significant rain, if they, whatever they say it's fixed. Uh, I guess they're at this point waiting for the engineer on their end to inspect it and make some recommendations. I just don't want to see mosquitoes become a super issue. But the Dean did say this morning they would come and do some spraying if needed. And of course, the board told him it was needed. So hopefully they'll be out and do that. But you know, one of the civil engineers that's retired, was on the board, brought up a really good point this morning. There was never a problem with that infield until they fixed it. So why did we fix it when it wasn't broke? And I know that Jim felt that. Uh, so 
I just want to see that we keep after it and make sure that everything's done and done properly. Right. Also told today that there's no that there's no valve installed, and that's part of the project. So no there's a valve to let that water go over the pump, and there is no valve. So there's 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 some major problems with it. Yes. The valve. Yeah, there is no there was no valve put in there yet. So it should drain out. Okay. On its own, but I was there yesterday and saw that there wasn't. Is it a situation where the pipe is clogged? I know that's been a point of contention with the dry one, hydrants in the past. One of the residents yesterday came out and I was talking to him and he said that uh, the contractor was out there and he's backing in a farm into that pipe. I don't know, I thought maybe it was that. Nothing so, came out the other end. So it's, it's blood somewhere. And there's also silt coming down from the new construction filling that in. So they didn't address that very well either. So my question is, what legal action do we have to get them to act in a, a little quicker manner? Okay, thank you. Okay. Just in case the microphone did not pick that up. Coslo of Stout will be looking at what legal action can be taken. Uh, also, Jim, if you want to uh, maybe slide the uh, the microphone that's to your right over a little bit. No, no, that one's yours. That one's yours. The other one, so that uh, it picks him up when he speaks. Thank you. I didn't. Know. Yeah, I had a <laughs> hard time hearing him too. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is the culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. Uh, we did unfortunately not get the dirt and low volume gravel road grant that we had put in for. Uh, we are asking McCarthy Engineering to draw plans uh, for replacement for using our road crew to do it in a similar fashion to, to how we're looking to do the culvert on Sheridan Road. Uh, I don't know if we have any updates around that or if that's still in progress. Well, it's in progress. We need to know our township planning on fixing it themselves as much as possible same same fashion as the Sheridan Road culvert. We're trying to use as much of our road crew labor as possible simply because trying to bid that out, we would probably not be able to do more than one culvert based in budget otherwise. Well, we just need to know who's going to do it because then we don't have the equipment. Yeah, well, I mean, we'd have to rent equipment for sure. Else has, we yeah. To design something that we would be capable of doing with either renting or Yeah, or yeah. I would assume that we don't have a lot of the things that you would normally use for a project like that, so we'd have to rent it from Lake Wico. Okay, speaking of the other culverts, the culvert on Marion Drive, north of School Road, uh, McCarthy Engineering did an inspection on April 27th, uh, recommending that the southbound lane remain open for the time being, but should be inspected regularly and monitored for cracks and openings developing in the existing paving. The double crossing pipes should be replaced as soon as possible though, as it is a uh, high potential for failure. Um, that was one of the things that I wanted to talk to either yourself or Jim about this evening is drawing up the same sort of project plan for that one as well. Um, as we shifted focus a little bit on some of the road work, we actually did oil and chip on th three roads this, this past week with Martin Paving. Uh, rather than putting out another bid packet for oil and chip, we're turning our attention to some of the failing infrastructure, which is a, a couple of those culverts that have seen uh, rapid degrade over the past year and a half. Next item is also a culvert. This is on Sheridan Road. Um, I actually got a call from Mervyn Brubaker earlier today about Sheridan Road. The plate there that was installed kind of as a stopgap for that one, which is uh, also sinking. The plate had come loose. Uh, they were kind enough uh, to reinstall the plate and put a cone on it. But uh, I'm going to have to have Butch go out like first thing tomorrow and get some cold patch on that so that it's actually a decent drivable surface. Um, that one we do have the design created, the total cost of that project is about $90,000, utilizing as much of our road crew as possible. Um, a lot of the, the cost of that is the actual box culvert and end walls, which total about $48,000 just in the material aspect of it out of that 90. Guide rails are another very expensive item that makes up a, a component of that 90,000. 
and uh, we're currently just waiting for the chapter 105 permitting to come back if that's if that's correct okay i i didn't get an update from jim in the past couple of days but we were waiting to see if it was general or gp11 but uh once we have that we can get the road crew started once the permitting is in place Next item on the agenda, also road related is Spur Road and School Road, the intersection therein. This is a dirt and low volume gravel road project that we undertook with Tulpahawken Township. Tulpahawken Township's roadmaster has suggested that we pave the first uh, five feet with macadam. This is to help reduce rutting and dissipation of the DSA, which is what makes up that dirt and low volume gravel road. Uh, the estimated cost is about $1,000. Um, we had reached out to Butch Fike placed a couple of voicemails to him we've not heard back yet in terms of uh, cost potential Peter, cost sharing or splitting i talked to him today oh good cool. good so if you check your email i've your been packet. i have not seen it yet no it's in the oh it's in it? okay I, I must have scrolled past it i'm sorry I'll scroll down to it i didn't read the email either yeah i, I no, missed it's it in the, it's in the stuff yeah, that i scanned i didn't scroll through it's it it's on your packet yeah. for tonight okay let me let me get to it i so while I'm doing that, do you want to give us the cliff notes, Sue? So he estimates about six ton of asphalt. Um, Pensy's price is $57.62 um, a ton. Okay. Um, that is a co-star's price. Um, he would like Reber and Zerby to lay it down. So we buy the macadam, they lay it down and then charge us. Um, he'd like to be in charge of the project. So every all the bills would go to Topahawk and Township, and then they'll bill us. Okay. Are we looking? Did he indicate a like a hundred percent bill rate or a split? Well, he estimated six ton at fifty seven sixty two is three hundred forty five dollars and seventy two cents. Now he said they would charge us about one hundred and fifty dollars per foot to lay it down. So he said he thinks tops is going to be a thousand. Okay. They're not interested in going halves with us. Okay. I mean, even if it's not halves, but honestly, empirically speaking, it needs to get done, should get done. It's a thousand dollars well spent to keep that road, especially the, the angle at which you have to approach that road from degrading. Um, I'm in favor of this, Jim, Irene, what are your thoughts? Absolutely. It's a small price to pay for safety. Yeah. Not to mention a lot of this project was already funded through dirt and, uh, low volume gravel roads and it was already an equity split between the two townships as is so uh, i'll make a motion to approve the cost up to a thousand dollars for tulpa hawken to lay five feet of macadam at the intersection uh, of spur road second roll call peter aye irene aye jim aye okay Next is the road project 2021. This was the black, black topping the oil and chipping that we had done this past week with Martin Paving. This was awarded for $95,350.32, which was uh, Church Road, Idris, and Smaltz Road from Route 422 to School Road. Uh, we have received their report performance bond and a pre-construction meeting was held on 618. Work was performed on Monday, 621. Uh, Idris, they actually ended up using, because of the, the slight difference in the width of that one road, it was a uh, quarter, a layer of quarter inch rather than the layer of half and a quarter, which is also perfectly okay for residential. We were just going a little, little heavy on the original. So uh, from what McCarthy Engineering had passed along, it was Nick at McCarthy that uh, looks like they did a very nice job. They're going to be back in a, a couple of days to a week or two to do any sweeping that they have to do on that road surface. But they, they did a very nice job with the, the overlay there. Okay, next is uh, Ketterman Hill Road and Stouchburg Road intersections. Uh, an ordinance is needed around the dangerous intersection and stop ahead signs that we, we placed recently. Um, we don't really have any enforceability against those. They're for attention only, but to make them proper and official, we have to sign that ordinance, which is page 26 of the packet. Um, Having read this over, this is the standard thing that we have to enact every time we place any sort of sign. So I, I will make a motion to uh, adopt the ordinance. Do we have a number for that one, Sue? I, did, I forgot to look. Okay. Second. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. I will put it in the minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. 
Yes, yeah, I, I can hear you slightly. The The letter was about the bush at that intersection. Yeah, to yes, to yeah. He, he told me to, to ask to make sure because he thought he was supposed to, and he apologized. Yeah, he didn't. yeah. But he wasn't sure if I was supposed to find out if he was or if he were. Yeah, we'd, we'd like it to come from the, the zoning officer just for the, the sake of being official. Uh, with the, the added benefit of anybody has questions about the actual requirements, it's it, he's going to be able to be the best one to answer it. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll make sure that we prepare some records. Thank you. Okay, next up is the Aikens accounting audit. Uh, we're just waiting for the final review notice. Everything about the audit went very well, very smooth. They didn't have any issues or, or substantial questions. Um, there was a, a lot of work that went into getting the filing process straightened out so that it's uh, going to be a lot easier going forward than it was in years prior. But, Thank you, Dan. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a special thanks to Irene and Dan and Sue who put a lot of effort into to getting things in a, a very neat and cataloged format. Okay, next item is the website. The website is now live. Uh, MarionTWPBurks.com is accessible. Uh, we just recently received our administrative accounts, so we can now log in and start uploading things like the uh, joint zoning, or adding things to the calendar about like community association events. Uh, township meetings, things like that. Um, Lee, did... I have a question on the internet. Certainly. Uh, why has it taken the four years to do it? And also, we spend at least $5,000 one time. I understand we have the second internet company doing it. We got rid of them. Now we have the third one. We finally got it done. Mm -hmm. What does this thing cost the township? So the only been the entire time that I've been on the board, it has been the same civic CMS. There was a little bit of a hiatus as uh, Peter Wallace was doing the original work with them. And I took over when he stepped down. Admittedly, I had a little bit of a delay based on some personal things, but uh, we worked very closely with civic to get the design correct and get it rolled out and all the related technical bits that you have to do to get a website live done. So it did take a little longer than normal, but it has been the same company the entire time that I've been on the board the past, what's that, four, close to four years now? I think so. Um, and it's the original cost. We haven't spent any more than what we originally had agreed to. So it costs us $5,000, is that correct? I'd have to look at the bill yeah, for the exact to, figure, but it was it was it what we had entered into the contract with. with so that's when it was when Peter was in and mm -hmm. more was here yet. Yep. That's then the that is what it is. And that includes the actual design of the website, the maintenance of the website and the hosting. Because there's no reason to take that long. Not whatsoever. Okay. Your comment is, is notably. We wanted to go to Police Park Farmer's Market. It took us <coughs> three and a half hours. Your, your comment <laughs> is notably. Thank you. So something is wrong here. I'm not going to get the bottom of it. Okay, okay. I, uh, I'm happy to talk about it, Lee, but the, the honest, the, God's honest answer is they were working on it and there's a certain level of asynchrony in terms of getting content to them and design choices. And there were early on in the process some misconnections. Some of them were Peter Wallace. Admittedly, some of them were me, but I, I did not have the schedule availability to meet with them at certain times. And it just kind of drug out a little bit. Yeah. If COVID, you'd like to look at COVID it, played a part in that too. Yeah, like, we couldn't we meet couldn't at meet all last them. year with them. We didn't meet with them at all last yeah. year. So the honest answer is there was delays kind of all around, nothing nefarious, but it just took longer than we would have hoped. Okay. Do you get anybody on the board have any questions about the website? No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, next is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Light Planning and Design. Uh, we received a communication from Anne Marie Vigilante, Langan Engineering and Environmental Services, regarding the traffic planning and design for this project in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County. She asked us to review the PennDOT scoping comments and provide any additional comments. Uh, we made a motion at last month's meeting to provisionally uh, approve the review of the Cold Summit Development Traffic Study, depending on the opinion and decision of Womelsdorf regarding the sharing of costs and effort with Marion. Um, has McCarthy Engineering heard anything back from Womelsdorf? Womelsdorf agrees to pay 50-50 okay. for the review. They want to know, I 
was supposed to ask who is going to be the point person here. So we can arrange for that person and we'll go person to meet with uh, Greg Richardson, Richardson and GDB. Okay. I have limited availability. Jim, would you have availability? I, okay. My schedule's more flexible than all of yours. Yeah, okay. well, thank, thank you, Jim. So, so it would be Jim Brooks. Yeah. Um, can we just let the audience know a little bit? Oh, yeah. Better? No, I was going to yeah. dive yeah. into that okay. a little more. So um, there's a, a, a large development project happening in Mill Creek Township in Lebanon, um, a warehouse, some, some store frontage. Um, and it's basically directly behind Stonecroft in terms of placement. Um, some of the concern that, that we have is uh, traffic flow. We're talking huge, huge numbers of, of vehicles coming through and potentially detouring through Walmelsdorf or through Marion, especially down Main Street. Um, so we want to go through the motions of getting a proper study around so we can make a proper objection if this is going to have an adverse effect on the community. Did I cover that fairly well? Is there any? No, Dan's answer. Oh, Dan, yes. Got a question. Are they considering or thinking about using a railroad spur there at all? Not that I saw in the plan, no. I don't think that was mentioned anywhere. No. Because it goes right by it. Yeah, I mean, that's something that we can certainly raise in, in our comments therein. Thank you for bringing that up, Dan. I, I didn't even consider that because, like I said, there's no mention of it in anywhere in the, the written bit for that project. Yes. I think so. I'm trying to orient myself visually here, but I, yeah, I'm almost, I'm almost positive that's the, okay. the property in question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're planning some serious development. Like we're not talking small scale. It's like a where a very large warehouse and a number of other items therein. So it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not a small volume of traffic. Well, yeah, but I mean, you figure that just this, the tractor trailer traffic is a lot, but then you have workers and everybody else that's going to be in those locations. So there's going to be a lot of small car traffic as people commute to work. So, uh, that traffic yeah. is going to flow in many different directions. Mm -hmm. 501 yep. North, 501 South, yep. 422. Yep. And these straight tractor trailers said last month meeting. Wanted to go through the school parking lot because mm -hmm. he didn't want to make the two turns going to the full. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, whether whether it's the big traffic or the little traffic, traffic is definitely a concern for us and any of the, the immediately surrounding areas. So we want to make sure that we go through the process of properly, uh, I don't know if I want to say making objections, but making the proper comments and potentially objections to a, a project of that magnitude based on the impact it's going to have. So. Okay, so I guess the, the next step is we have Jim get together with somebody from the representation of Womelsdorf and go through the next bits of it. Thank you again for volunteering, Jim. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for volunteering. Now, if, if I'm available, give me a call. It, it's just, it depends <laughs> if I'm working or not. So. Okay. Next up on the agenda is building maintenance. Uh, we are looking to do some meeting room renovations to increase the, the usability of the space. Um, there were a couple of things that we did in advance of having public meetings again, uh, the microphones, the speakers, uh, long term, we'd like to get the speakers mounted ceiling. That way the audio distribution is a little better than just a couple of points around the room. Um, we have received some quotes for a couple of things for like drop ceiling and things in this space. Incus Construction and Mike's Remodeling have both provided estimates for putting in a drop ceiling, which will help with uh, just general heating and cooling as well. Uh, Carl Keith also supplied an estimate for adding air conditioning rather than us using the, the window unit, getting an actual centralized air handling system in since we have the, the furnaces put in from prior. Several contractors took measurements and the estimates range from 11,500 to 21,300. Based on the volume, we will need to have uh, three written or telephone quotes from uh, qualified and responsible contractors in order to make any sort of decision around that. Can I make a comment? You absolutely okay. can make a comment. So just again, for everyone's uh, knowledge here, 
Um, we did budget funds for this for building maintenance, and I believe that was $54,000 off the top of my head uh, for general building maintenance. And so there's a, a paper here over what we'd like to have the contractors give us a bid on. If anyone knows anyone that's interested in work, please have them come down to the township building. Generally, the office is open between 9.30 to 2, Monday through Friday. I've contacted 20 contractors, and we've heard from three. And uh, all the, uh, a number of people said that they'd give us estimates, but never showed up, never called back, never sent emails, didn't even respond. So it, to me, it's very surprising. As you guys can see, the age of the windows is, is obviously showing. We need those replaced. It affects heating and cooling costs. We want to remove some of the non-functioning items in the room. We just want to make this a better experience for everyone, including better AV for everyone. And, and it, it, for those who've been to prior meetings, obviously we flipped the room. This wall, we're going to be able to just repaint and project on the budget, project on the agenda, project everything so everyone can follow along a little bit easier and see what we're seeing in, on our screens too. So instead of having to shuffle through papers, whatever. So we're trying to make this a better experience for everyone. And we're trying to maintain the building. I mean, unfortunately, there's been some neglect and we're trying to do the best to make it a better experience for everyone in the community. Thank you. Yeah, one of the, one of the benefits like you had said about the wall there, is if we have a, a yes, Jenny. Um, so we're trying to maintain as much of the historical value as possible. Well, the windows are, uh, I won't go too far into that. The windows need to be replaced. They're, they're, oh, I understand yeah. That. yeah. Gonna right. I'm, I'm actually going to, if you noticed on the way in, the premise would be to try to get as much of a close format as we possibly can, like we did with the office windows in here as well. One of the estimates that we received talked about blocking in a section. None of us were interested in that. We want to have as much of the original character of, of the building preserved as possible. I don't think it qualifies for a historical site. Have you checked with the state on that? I think that has been done before. I, I honestly don't know. And I know there are grants for that, but I think there was an inquiry a while ago I hope Matt had looked into that before. Um, if anybody would yeah. know, it would be Matt Barnhart. But yeah. One of the other things to consider is there are, there have been has done a number of things in the past. Like even the uh, the heating system could potentially invalidate that. I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. That right. Yeah. Like right. Physical oh, yeah. So, like, the way that I've approached this is, for example, if we put drop ceiling in, I'm not talking dropping it, like, really, really low, just enough to, one, give us room to mount things to the ceiling safely and maybe cut down the amount of air that we have to heat or cool, but still doing things like retaining the original lights, shortening the chains and keeping the character of the lights, trying to get a, a drop ceiling that looks very similar to the original tiles. Um, windows. Unfortunately, you can't really get windows that look like that anymore. So you just have to try to get something that fits the space and looks as nice as possible. Um, right. To, to have a reproduction place in, the costs are so astronomical, especially for the size that we have. I mean, we got one estimate was $41,000 just for the windows and the brickwork around it alone. And that is too big of a part of our budget. So we'd all... Right. There, there should be, and there are grants, but there aren't grants significant enough to cover. Because I did look into historical renovations at some point, but I think, I can't remember who it was, but the, the building, I think, was disqualified from it. I'll look into that and get you a, a more specific I'm answer. Really yeah, please, please. And yeah. if, if, we're, if you have any information... And, you know, if there's money out there to help us keep it more in tune with its original plan, I'd love to do that. We all would love to do that. Just, um, just yeah. in general, if you're aware of something that is going to be helpful or a funding source that maybe we haven't been made aware of or considered, please, absolutely. I'm, I'm always open to ideas, suggestions, or uh, potentially an alternative way of thinking about doing something. Okay. So, Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's the PA Historical Science Society. And then DCED um, often enough puts out grants information about grants so if you, if you have the time please you know call the office stop down whatever it is the, the office is, is now open let me know i'll work with you and and whatever funding we can get to keep this building beautiful and it's an original <coughs> character as much as possible that's what we need to do but you know these windows are, are poor for insulation they're not that great for airflow they, they want water in though. yeah yeah that was a big problem in the office too we were getting water in and the damage around the windows was just 
it wasn't fun to deal with. So, yeah. but please, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. Would say it's it's yeah. something like we all love the building. It's it's got a lot of character. It's got a lot of history, and it's it's dare I say a landmark within the community. So. Yeah. It is, it is, but it, it's never been, been given historical designation, and that's the problem. If it's not been given that designation, and because I think there has been too many alterations to the original building, it probably won't qualify. But, you know, if you're willing, I'll, I'll work with you. I'd be more than happy to, to jump on top of that. And going, going back yeah. to the drop ceiling for a second, too, like, like I said, we want to do something that's going to be a, a, a tangible improvement, something that's going to save us money in the long run without sacrificing the character of the building. I don't, for the record, I don't want to put in the standard like office building no. style drop ceiling because that's just hideous. Um, we also have to be kind of fiscally responsible around that because we can't necessarily buy some beautifully custom fabricated thing for the ceiling because it would be just way too much money. So we have to find the balance of form and function so that we can do things to improve without really getting rid of what we we have that's that's good to begin with yeah and we're talking about paint drop ceilings improving the electrical adding some more outlets and equipping the the ceiling so we have a better av system and that's about windows and and uh ac and heat in here just to make it more comfortable if anyone's hot tonight you could blame me i suggested keeping the windows open so if yeah. anyone wants to be angry blame me while we're, we're talking about the av system <laughs> if i can ask can you can you hear us okay out of the, the speakers Okay, so I'll, I will I will readjust. I uh, I calibrated, but it's different moving around. So okay, thank you, Kelly. Um, okay, do we have anything else from building maintenance standpoint other than continuing to try to get yeah. estimates on things? Yeah, you guys know any contractors? Please have them stop by the office. I, I'm astounded at the lack of response. So I think it would be a good segue because I don't know if it's actually on the agenda as a full item. The uh, ARP. Okay. Stuff. Let's talk about the ARP stuff. Sure, sure. Not a problem. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, every township, every borough, and every city in the state of Pennsylvania across the nation are getting funds from the American Rescue Plan. If anyone wants to look, I have a quick fact sheet here. And just to clarify, there's very limited usage for these funds. We have to um, adhere to strict guidelines. I've already spoken with our accountants, as well as the bank, as far as recommendations as to how to proceed with these funds. Um, we can use them or possibly for building improvements. Our intention was to possibly donate funds to the Marion Township Community Association for park improvements, but there may be a hiccup with that. Um, that might not be allowable. We can use it for water, broadband, and sewer. Other than that, there are very limited restrictions. There are very limited guidelines as to what we can use the money for. And every week, the Treasury Department is coming out with new guidelines. So if anyone is, is curious, I have just a brief um, synopsis of it. If anyone would like to look it up in more detail, PSATS, P -S -A -T -S .org, is putting out bulletins every week. You don't need a password or user ID. You can just go onto the website and just really type in ARP. <laughs> as far as a the plan, they're, they, they're posting bulletins. Each of those bulletins will take you to some different websites, including treasury guidelines that are, are currently available. So we uh, have just kind of come up with a wish list over things that we can do with the funds. And we're working on a plan to improve for the most part the building and, and do what we can with the funds. The problem is it's one of those, you use it or you lose it type of a deal. We'll be receiving half of those funds. We should be receiving them this month. I haven't seen any deposits yet. And then another deposit uh, this time next year, we're receiving the tune of about $204,000, um, which is a nice sum of money, but you know, as everyone knows, cost of, of work and all that stuff has been going up. So. Again, we're trying to be very prudent with the funds. Uh, honestly, the biggest struggle now is trying to comply with treasury guidelines over what those funds can be used for because it's so restrictive. It has to be in response to the COVID pandemic. We have to demonstrate a need and we have to use those funds towards remedying that need. So again, so if anyone has any requests or concerns, please you know, air it to us, please let us know. Again, call the office, stop by, yes. Um, we'll, we're going to take a look and see what we can do because again, right, but right, but we can't give you money because you did that. It has to be in response to 
COVID mitigation measures and response to that. Yeah. So, so as a good example, one of the things we were considering was renovation to the office space. That way, if there ever was a pandemic in the future, we would not have to potentially close the building like we did. Think sort of like right. instead of the instead of the debris through door having like a like a doctor's office style glass yeah. with the, the wind, simple things. Um, potentially trying to rehab the garage area over there as a, a space that would be better suited for filing file storage in the office and having the, the front door be over there, which would open up other space for other uses and functions. Like we could have the tax collector over here for, for sitting hours and things like that. So things, things that you can do that you can directly tie to pandemic or pandemic response fit very nicely into the guidelines, but just trying to use the money for, oh, we spent this unfortunately isn't going to fit and in the case of like the community association our, our simple reaction to that is um we shift our budget a little bit so rather than budgeting let's say eighty thousand dollars for building repairs next year we budget 70 instead and we give ten thousand of the budget to the community association for the playground it's it's a little bit of a, a shell game internally from a right. budget standpoint but ultimately we use the the funds in the ways that they were legally required to be used and still meet the goals that we have set out. Yeah, so so it's not us, it's it's big government that uh, is providing the restrictions and we're just trying to comply. They're and, also providing the money though. Too. Yeah, they're providing the money, yes. And so we're trying to come up with a very comprehensive plan, but unfortunately every week there's a new regulation or new recommendation, new inquiry that's coming down. And it's a little bit hard to follow, but I'm just collecting data we're trying to figure out what we can do with these funds to, again, help improve the community. So this is a one-time thing? It's, it's gonna be this like, year and next year, and the funds have to be used initially. The initial regulation was by 2024. Now it's- You have the, to have your plan in place by 2024, the end of 2024, and you have to use the money by the end of 2026. Yeah. So that's the amount that we're gonna get, that's it. That, that is it. That's it. That is it. Yes. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. No, unfortunately, no. unfortunately, that's divvy. It's it's not a waste of time. There's certain things so that, that we. For yeah. COVID. COVID's done, so you, you well, know, well, COVID's not we done. Didn't really right. So, I mean, I'm saying right. we didn't have a lot of shutdown like everyone else right. had. Right. Right. So, what are we really going to use that money? Right. For? So, so, so the question is, is, is we so internally, we had a lot of issues. If it wasn't for Peter getting us on par with the computer and getting us to Zoom meetings, that would have been a very difficult thing for us to improve. We were severely lacking when it comes to anything internal with respect to our computer storage service, et cetera. So that's an area of improvement. I believe that we can update, mm -hmm. which we need to. Um, as far as access to the office, we had to shut the door. Right. And often enough, it was myself and Sue sitting in here oh trying God. to, right, trying trying to scramble some yeah. stuff. But, right. Right. So, well, so, so there's there's right. for, for the record, there's things we can find to do with it. And right. if we don't, it, it evaporates. Right. Right. It, it evaporates. goes evaporates. away. Right. Yeah. Right. So what we're trying to do is making is to keep the building accessible to the public because the reality is is this is not going to be the first pandemic. We're a global community. This might be the first of many. This might be the first in a hundred years, right? So so what we want to do is anticipate the needs now and in the future and remedy what we can so that none of us are caught with our pants down again like yeah. we were. Yeah. So and to, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so there's only so much that we could do. And again, we're working with McCarthy to help us find um, yep. funds for that. And the last we actually, meeting, we yeah. have an, there's an agenda item for this yep. and yep. I'll, I'll go into that more because I know that's a, a subject of hot debate for myself yep. as well. Um, so any, anything else, Irene, Jim, yeah. about American Rescue Plan? Sue, is there anything you want to add? You've been very silent yeah. over there. So there's a fact sheet here if anyone wants to take a look at it again, PSAT, P -S -A -T -S org. You could click on that website and, and you could look at it weekly like I've been doing, see about any updates if that's a concern for you guys. That what it was that you are considering? We're, we try to yeah, we'd like to, to renovate another portion of the building. We'd like to redo the current garage and convert that over to an office so that when it's accessed by the public, both the people behind the wall of the office are safe. It's, it's kind of minimizing 
um, direct contact with people so that people can still come in, pick up their permits, ask questions, you know, issue complaints, whatever it is that they need to do so that we didn't have the shutdown like we did. So it was kind of awkward, you know, like we might meet people at the door. A lot of stuff was done via telephone so that the public can still access the building and we could do it safely so that we're not exposed and you're not exposed. So that's that's part of what we're considering. But again, it's like every week I'm, I'm hashing over these regulations to see if we can do that. So then what happens with the space that's sacrificed in Murata? I'm not the, the, the long-term goal, and we had actually looked at this before, the, the salt shed that's out there, there's a couple, couple of things in play here. The salt shed that's out there really doesn't have the kind of capacity. We've had in the past couple of winters to borrow space at a, a neighboring municipality. So getting a slightly larger area for salt and cinders directly behind the current garage and they're not terribly expensive. We don't need anything fancier or fabricated. It's like large cement blocks and the, the hoop covers. Um, having somewhere to put that, which would open up the, the current salt shed and garage area where we could put the trucks over there, which would have the benefit of added space, which would make maintenance and care on the trucks easier because it's, it's very close quarters in that garage with both trucks in there. And then we'd have more usable space in the building that we could convert it for uh, office space, filing, storage, um, depending on how much space is there, another small meeting area, which people like the community association, the Grange, AA, could make better use of the building that we have. Yes. I, I, what I'm hearing here is I think you're wasting a lot of money on this building. I think you need to make a plan and build some kind of new building if this is a historical society, let them run with it and you build a building that is more accessible. You have a little uh, meeting room in there and then you would have your garage for your people. I, I think you're wasting your money on this building. So you're, you're, you're spending so much money in this building and, and you're not, this building is not any more useful for what the township needs it for. So we actually did talk about that. There's a, a couple of things that are limiting factors on that. And I'm, I'm still open to the idea. I like the idea of it being a historic space. I think I've said that a couple of times throughout the, the meeting. Uh, availability of space. There's not a lot of space within Marion Township that's not on some sort of like ag preserve or, or anything else. Um, it's a good, relatively centralized location. It's got a lot of history of being kind of the center of the township. And the other aspect of is cost. Yes, we're putting money into the building, but building a new space, breaking new ground, and getting all of the associated infrastructure in place for it would be exponentially more expensive. We, Not in the right, water. but right. We don't disagree with you, but yeah. our, our budget is $600,000 a year. And that's and for everything. That's for everything. Currently, none of the supervisors are taking any money for any of the work that we do. None of us are taking an hourly wage. We get paid for the, I'm sorry? They never have. No, they have. And if you want to go ahead and look at past yeah. uh, supervisors, supervisors did get paid for the work they, they did. Yeah. If you look at the treasurer, um, if they served at, as roadmaster, you can go make a right to know request. They did. Okay. So, so none of us are taking any income from, from the township. So we're saving a little bit of money in that respect, but I'd hate to know what the monthly payment would be on $5 million, because that's just like a ballpark idea over what we need. I mean, how much is the, uh, the fire department, that building, how much was that? Do you, do you know? Really? Yeah. yeah I mean, you could put a, building, a whole building up for 500. So even 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 five hundred thousand right, even, even five hundred thousand is is something that would be very difficult to fit into right. the budget, and we would have to we'd have to finance. That's right. the whole budget for a year. Yeah, yes, Roy. Yeah. So speaking honestly, the oh no, no water in it. I don't, I don't want to modify it, Roy. You don't have enough room for the equipment put in there that you have now. We'd be able to fit the, the two trucks, the stuff that's in the side garage, I'd want to leave in there for the time being. And long-term, this is something that we had talked a little bit about during COVID, is long-term, I want to tear that down and put a pole building up. That would be a much better use of the space. Yeah, but it's a much smaller pole building. Yeah. And this is this, none of this is set in stone. This is right. things that we, we're trying to right. find the best path forward with the, the limited 
resources that we have. Right. And so we are trying to get I ballpark ideas over cost, but it's it for something like that, it's probably cost prohibitive. Even if we were to say a million dollars, what would that monthly payment be? Even if you could spread that over 50 years, that's taxpayer dollars and we have to find a place to do it. Where would you do it? You know, I, I don't know of any place in Marion, if anyone else does, I'd be more than happy to look at it, entertain the thought, speak to the banks, speak to construction agencies, just to get the information. And so again, coming back and having a discussion over, is this the best course of action for us? I'd love to- Yeah, you know, I'm I'd not opposed to entertaining to, any ideas. Right, you know, explore that avenue, explore that idea. You know, we don't disagree with you at all, but we're trying to like kind of, there's been neglect here and we're trying to kind of remedy that with the funds that we do have available. We, we you know, like to everyone has has a dream of a brand new place and a brand new building and it would be great to accommodate everyone but you know there, there's there's so much in the balance and, and it all boils down to the dollar you know it, it's what can we can afford what we can't afford not to mention as mentioned earlier if you have ideas or know of sources of money or uh, a good a good company that builds pole barns on the cheap yes please you, share yeah, we would yeah. we would love to see it Dan. Yeah, Peter, I, I think it's important to understand that the renovation that you folks are talking about doing is coming from the pandemic funds mm -hmm. right. and not from the township budget. Now, if you build a new building someplace, that got to come from the township budget. Correct. Yes. Not from pandemic funds. Yes. Correct. Those funds that we're making available to us will help us greatly to to make these renovations yeah. or modifications and, and very, forward. very well put, Dan. Is that money paid for the new drop ceiling? It would actually, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. No, actually, no. Uh, we're, the, okay. the original this, guidelines. No, no, this room, there was a budget set aside for 2020 to have this, this area renovated. 54,000 was designated as building maintenance, okay? And there's, I don't want to say there's a surplus in the budget, but because 2020, there was little to no expenditures, the money is sitting in, in, in the bank, okay? But annually, there's a portion of the budget that's designated to building repairs. There has been neglect in the past. Peter has told me the nightmare story of, of getting the roof fixed. So there's a certain amount of sums that are designated annually for building maintenance. We're going to try to implement those building maintenance uh, repairs that are desperately needed. But also, in addition to that, as Dan just mentioned, having the garage redone is just hopefully out of that COVID money. So ideally, again, if you have any ideas, if you know of land, if you know of anything, it's the land purchase, it's, it's all the permits, it's et cetera, et cetera. A building alone may not be all that expensive, but it's the permits and everything else, all the other uses that we need. We need, need to make sure that's ADA access adequate bathrooms, you know, there, there's yeah. so much that goes into it. There's another consideration, again, um, having it used as a um, uh, evacuation site also, because now we have an active EMC who's interested in making sure that there's resources in the community. We're getting more flooding, we're getting more violent weather. There's so much that goes into it. There's so much that, that we want to consider, but we're constrained by our budget. We're constrained about the money that we have. I don't want to raise taxes. I don't think these guys want to raise taxes. You know, I pay enough in taxes, but you know, there's only so much money that that is available to us. So, a six hundred thousand dollar budget really doesn't go a long way. And just just for the record about the windows, it's it's something that if you ignore it long enough, it will become a much larger problem. the The testament to that is out in the hallway where the, the roof had had an issue for quite a while, the soffits and the gutters, which we did a couple of years ago, I believe that was shortly after I, I took office. Um, that wall was starting to run into serious water damage problems. Had we not fixed it, it would have developed into a much larger problem. The windows at some point will become similar. If enough water gets in, you can start to erode the bricks, you can start to undermine the foundation. And with an opening that size, that's that's a pretty dangerous prospect. I have a question about the Certainly. Uh, Certainly. Because well, eight, 10 years ago, that wall was starting to the, the The one on the far side? Yeah. Yeah, that's something we had we had looked at. And uh, kind of if we go back down the, the rabbit hole of the ARP money, we'd want to close in that garage door. 
and that would help to alleviate that because that was never meant to have an opening that size that was engineered in later because that used to be classroom spaces if i'm not mistaken sue correct yes yeah so that right. essentially yes it's not something that we've like earmarked specifically as a project but it would be something that's fixed by proxy well, yeah, that yeah. Whatever, yeah. That's a, that's a yeah, that, that whole wall, like you had said, needs yeah. attention. The windows are in equally bad shape. We actually had one of the panes of glass blow out over the winter. And again, we got to do something with it because right now it's a, a moderate sized problem. Much longer, it'll become a much bigger problem. All the windows in this building are bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're original. They're very, very old, and they're from a, a time when single pane glazed windows were, were a thing. Um, we're much further on in, in technological developments. We have like the windows that we put in that are like double pane, and they're considerably better at doing the job of a window. The, the difference between the old windows and the new windows is profound. Like the, the office doesn't take anywhere near as much effort to, to cool oh, yeah. with the air conditioner. It actually keeps water and wind out. We don't have drafts in that room anymore. And I don't get wet when it storms. Yeah. So it's it's all things. Nobody likes spending money, myself included, especially when it's somebody else's money. But there's things that you have to do to prevent small problems from turning into a big problem. And as much as we possibly can, we're trying to get ourselves into a position, whether it's the building, the roads, anything else where we can start to get ahead of small problems before they are left long enough to become big problems. Okay, next item on the agenda is the removal of chemicals out in the garage. Uh, we have contracted with Elk Environmental to come out and remove those chemicals. There is, uh, for anybody that is not in the know, probably 30 years worth of accumulated random chemicals of who knows what. Uh, there's a 55 gallon drum of, again, no one really knows. There's old expired pesticides and old paints and everything that you could possibly imagine and things that you can't. So because of the, the caustic and hazardous nature of those things, there's only so many places that you can get to remove them. Uh, Elk returned a, an estimate for that and uh, we're having them come out and remove that on July 2nd because much like the other issues that we have with the building, that's a that's a problem waiting to happen. The, the drum erodes enough that it leaks or spills or someone has an accident in the garage and is exposed to some caustic or otherwise hazardous material that would be a, a major problem. So uh, I believe Butch has volunteered to be here when they do that. So special thank you to Butch for Friday, July 2nd, uh, where we can finally get that out of the garage and not have to worry about that. upstairs back more last i looked there weren't any up there i'll double check we uh, we went through at one point and we tried to gather everything that we could find into one corner of the garage so that they could pick it up okay if uh, i'll dig around and make sure nothing was buried if anything got missed it'll get added to the it'll get added to the pile yeah Yes, we. I had called her. They don't handle anything like that. She didn't know of anybody else except Elk who could handle it. Twice a year they do a hazardous material. We're, no, we're no, not. They don't we're not eligible for that. Well, I understand that, but they take it somewhere. Yeah, I, I don't know if they contract through Elk or not, but we spoke to them and they recommended this particular firm. It's it because we can't transport some of this materials to them. So we have these who knows what barrels in there that need to be removed from the building because we can't, we're not too sure about the integrity. <laughs> no, yeah. no, one, no, one gallon jug at a time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They're pumping some of the barrels out into other barrels because we're not, we don't, even, we don't know if the bottom of those barrels is yeah, I mean, structurally they've, sound. They've been sitting stationary for a Decades. very, very Decades. long time. Okay. Who was that? It's been sitting for uh, a long time. You have 5,000 gallon oil tanks sitting out of Yes. Yeah, that, that is something else that we, Man. that is something else that we need to deal with. And uh, unfortunately has not filtered to the top of the pile, but I know like you and I had actually even had a discussion about that at one point of how to best to approach that, whether it's digging it out, filling it in with like a, an aggregate mixture or something. 
because the bottom line is we, we have an insurance policy around that particular thing and we don't use it. It's, it's not doing us any favors, but right now it's also not doing us any harm other than taking up a little bit of space and a little bit of cost. Uh, the, the alternative and the thing that scares me about that project, speaking honestly, is if we were to dig it out, knowing the nature of that, if there was any sort of leakage or a contamination, we've effectively opened Pandora's box. It could be a astronomical sum of money to remediate that because once you find the contamination, you have to keep digging until you don't find contamination. So as much as I, I completely agree with you, Roy, it, it's something we need to deal with, but we need to deal with that when we have the, the proper path forward and the proper resources to deal with it. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Association of Township Officials. Uh, this, uh, in, I guess it would be request, came in with the invoice for dues. Uh, we asked Attorney George about reviewing this, and he advised that this is not something that we need to send back unless the supervisors specifically have an issue that they'd like addressed by the Commonwealth through legislation. Uh, it's purely a vehicle to get things to Harrisburg via the Berks County Township Officials Organization. And uh, apparently no other municipalities that he is aware of are submitting the form back. So uh, the general consensus when we first received this was if it's not needed, we're not going to do it. And I, at this point, I don't see any reason to, to deviate from that. No. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the radio for the EMC. Uh, our emergency management or manager uh, does not have a radio. This is something that the township had in the past. And at some point uh, it disappeared. So it is something that has to be replaced. I know John has been making efforts to try to recover the, the person who was previously in custody of it, but uh, has been unsuccessful. Um, the cost, which is uh, a non-negotiable amount from the Berks County, uh, I guess it's the emergency yeah. center, or, uh, is $5,200. They want us to sign the radio management user agreement and also their system user agreement. Um, the motion was made at the workshop meeting to approve the cost, which we had previously budgeted, uh, as well as sign the two agreements for their use. Uh, this was brought into sharp contrast when we had the uh, missing persons about a month ago, and we had emergency management coordinators and emergency response from various other entities and municipalities, and ours was the only one that did not have a radio. We had to borrow a radio from another area in order to stay in contact. So uh, do we have any update on when, when we're going to get the radio? No, no clue. No clue? Okay. Yeah. John has to deal with the county okay. on that. So hopefully by next month, we'll have an yeah. update about the radio being in our possession. But uh, it, it's something that went missing a long time ago and should have been replaced many years yeah. ago and just simply wasn't. Okay. Next, uh, the big truck required some repairs in order to pass inspection. It needed right and left springs. The left spring was actually broken at the time of inspection. Uh, we made a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize the replacement of the springs at Bud's Springs in Lancaster. The total cost for the springs was $2,200, including labor. Repairs were finished this past Tuesday, and it is uh, at this point now inspected again and ready to go out on, on regular duty. Final item on the agenda is the Act 537 plan. This has been something that we've been working at the entire time on COVID. Uh, we originally had a pretty good open dialogue with the, uh, the DEP around trying to make some uh, revisions to the plan around cost and uh, need. And initially it was very receptive and then suddenly kind of took a 180 where they, they basically said no. So our, our tax on this is we are still under the, the timeline of the original plan that was submitted by the other supervisors on the board at the time uh, to meet certain milestones. One of them is to uh, start looking for grant funding and to do an income study, which is actually going to be beneficial for two reasons. If for any reason we do have to comply with the original plan, we are not in, in violation of anything and not subject to daily fines, but it also gives us a good idea of affordability. Um, as we start to move through the uh, on-lot management ordinance and people's systems are pumped out and inspected, we'll have the other half of that equation, which is the need. We'll have a, a, an actual tangible data-driven picture of what the state of our systems are in the township and be able to compare that directly to affordability. The grants available and the income study will tell us how much cost our community actually could 
feasibly endure. And I have a feeling that based on how high construction costs are now, which we've asked McCarthy Engineering to recalculate the cost of that project compared to, what, I'm sorry? Which is in process and will be emailed to each of you before next month's meeting. Thank you. Great. So we should have that in hand before next month's meeting. But all the, all the pieces of the puzzle will hopefully be together soon in terms of being able to make a compelling argument that it is uh, not cost effective for some reason. If and I'll, I'll say this, if it's something that is needed and affordable, it makes sense. If it's something that is not needed, but still affordable, it makes a lot less sense. If it's something that's not needed and not affordable, it doesn't make sense. And that's where we as a board would have to dig in and try and block mm -hmm. so that we don't have an, an undue hardship placed on any mm -hmm. of the residents in the township. Irene, is there any, or Jim, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? No. Um, just as a, a kind of a, a side note, because I went on a little bit of a tangent there, uh, we have started work with uh, Colleen Terry, who is a, a grant writer at Econ Partners and a referral from McCarthy Engineering uh, to do the income study and start to get that in place. Uh, we also did change SEOs at the beginning of the year. Uh, we are now going through uh, uh, Berks and Virotech, who is uh, Alan Madera as the, the SEO. Uh, he is done a, a fantastic job so far and yes. he's working on getting the the plan together around getting those uh pump outs and inspections done in a very orderly and regimented fashion um, letters are going to go out we originally had intended to do that but we had a number of things in flux around the letter we have one prepared that goes into some things around like joint zoning uh, the act 537 but a number of things have unfortunately changed especially with the act 537 that were originally in that letter, which is why we held off on sending it. And Alan's helping and, us. And Alan, yeah. is, and Alan is helping us too. Yeah. Um, the other thing that works in our favor is uh, Alan Madera is apparently held in, in quite high regard at the DEP. So not that it's going to be a, like a necessarily a game changer, but uh, having his input in an official capacity as an SEO is, is going to be beneficial for us as we make an argument one way or the other. And I apologize. Did you, did you want to say something? I saw you look, okay. Um, uh, we also did find out that Wollesdorf, despite uh, having a number of EDUs purchased by other properties and uh, the John F. Martin plant, that uh, they, they do will have more than 200 remaining EDUs within the next couple of years. So the, the capacity is still there. That was one of the things that we did want to confirm is that the plan doesn't make an assumption on availability for that, that centralized plant that wouldn't be there at the time of execution. Um, so we're going to continue to try to, uh, I guess, make the best of a bad situation and do everything in our power to make sure that this is uh, done in whatever capacity it has to be done in the most responsible and uh, effective way possible. I know we don't want to see anybody put under the hardship of uh, having to do a huge project that's not needed or unaffordable, but at the same time, if we do find that it's actually warranted and it would be cost savings to residents over a long period, then we'll have to regroup and we'll have a, like a town hall or something like that and try to make the explanation as best as possible. Okay, if we don't have anything further to that, that's no. the last item on the you, agenda. You did kind of gloss over that they're, the communication with them is broken down. They're not communicating with us at all. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was quite good there for a while that actually even offered to like do a Skype meeting. And that, that kind of went cold at one point. I'm not sure what the difference was. But anyway, scroll down. I don't have any major items for discussion. Um, the only thing that I have is uh, I'll cover the police report in a second. But uh, I went out with Butch and drove some of the roads. Uh, Wintersville Road actually has an issue with a, a pipe that crosses the road where by drainage, and I think it's just a, a simple sloping sort of situation. I want to have uh, the road crew out and possibly somebody from McCarthy from a uh, stormwater runoff standpoint. But uh, one section of the road is actually washing out as water tends to go towards that pipe. And again, it's a situation where it's a small enough problem now that if left to its own devices, the road will probably crumble into the, the travel lane. Um, so... I'll keep you guys informed on that, but uh, the, the premise would be to try to head it off if it's a simple matter of regrading the, the gutter on that side, uh, building up the, the section, putting some, some cold patch in the, the spot that's degraded 
still need to figure out the exact components of that, but we need to do something with that before it has more degrade than it already has. Um, in terms of the police report, it looks like it was a, a very quiet month last month. There were no traffic accidents, no DUI arrests. There was only one parking ticket. Um, really everything across the board in every single category was lower than it usually was. So uh, really nothing noteworthy there. Just as an aside, for those of you that don't know, there was a noise ordinance that was passed. So if there's any issues coming up around July 4th, so Hopkins Police has a copy of that noise ordinance. You can dial 911 if it's outrageous, if it's continuing for more than half hour, it's after 10 p.m. There is the noise ordinance that's in place. We, we can give you a copy. I'll have to, yeah. Yeah. It, it's on it's, the Google Drive and there's, right, there's, there's a lot to it. I'll get you a copy. Yes. Did you say that you did a drive around of the roads in Marion Township? I did. And you don't think that Marion Drive and School Road have issues? Oh, they do. They, they do. guaranteed do. Well, why aren't you guys taking Marion Drive? That bridge has been out. Let's see. What is it now? That was, that was, Five years? what agenda item was that? We actually, and we that talked. that bridge could have been taken care of the week after the storm because the state said that any emergencies after that flooding that could have been taken care of immediately, and it wasn't. To be entirely blunt, we didn't and have the money. Uh, did I hear that you said something about you're going to set them out to patch the road over there? Mm -hmm. Wrong thing to do. You're wasting money. You're wasting money patching this stuff. The road is caving in. You've got to dig it up. You've got to put a pipe in there. You've got to fix it right. Forget fixing this building oh. up. Let's get this, these roads fixed. These roads, I live on school road. It's dangerous. That road is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Hello, the and that's dangerous because the whole thing is I mean, this, this is ridiculous. You're throwing all this money and yeah. fixing this building up, and we are paying taxes, and these roads are hard. The cost of road work is very high. Oh, I, right. I think I know that. No, I, right. I'm, I'm well, stating. Where's the all the 600000 going? If you say you're 600000 and I know you right. can't throw in for Apple money, mm -hmm. right. and I know you get a, a chunk of money there, OK? Yeah, it's a, lo a lot of it's liquid okay, fuels. Liquid fuels is 52000 and change a year. That's all that we get from liquid fuels money. So did you print up the account balances? Uh, yeah. yeah it, sure. it, it's, 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 again, it's this, like, kind of, we were talking last meeting, mm -hmm. the culvert. We pulled back on half the road work that we decided to do because that, because that takes half the money out of the account. And now the culverts that we have to uh, fix, that's probably going to come out of general fund because we don't have the money in our liquid fuels. Yeah. We don't have it in that road district fund. We all wish we could fix um, every yes, road. I'd, I'd love to fix everything. Right. But in the case of school road, school road, really, to your point about putting a Band-Aid on things with cold patch, school road, there's really one way to do that. And that's a full depth reclamation. Many years ago, that was $400,000 a mile to do that. And I guarantee the cost of that has gone up substantially right. even recently so we just take our chisel plows and and you know we plant soybeans for a <laughs> person down on the blue marsh okay the freaking roads that they got in there in blue marsh in the in the fills in the land that people mm -hmm. go in the wilderness that road's better than school road so one of the things that we have to we have to work around is things like grants, specifically the dirt and low volume gravel road, any other sources. Well, are you, are you we are. Yes. We are. Every well, time one of them comes open, yeah. we apply. We didn't get the one that we applied for this past year, which is why uh, I think it was agenda item number three, no, uh, four and five were those two culverts on Marion that rather than putting overlay oil and chip on some of the roads, which are, uh, I, let me, let me, word this a specific way. Um, the overlays help keep the road passable. A lot of the roads, the way they were originally paved over time, they've just become essentially dry and brittle. Putting an overlay on them occasionally helps to keep the road from degrading, but we're switching gears on that and we're trying to focus on the two culverts on Marion and the one on Sheridan simply because we have money budgeted for road work and we have a need there. The statement that you made about not immediately doing it after the storm, I would have loved to do it after the storm. It wasn't in the budget. The money simply was not there. You didn't need the money. My husband, uh, we talked with the NRS, NRCS, 
and we brought a paper in here, mm -hmm. Peter Wallace that night, and there was there was a release of government. You could have went and got money from the county and fixed that bridge the day after that flooding was done because the state lifted all the regulations of using an engineer or anybody to do it. And Peter said, oh, we can't do this because this program was developed in 2013. Yeah, it was developed in 2013, but it is to be used any time. Yeah, I can't speak for the other Peter. What I do, I hold on, time. hold on. What I do remember is that the amount of funding in that was not anywhere near enough so to needed. There was no need for funding. You have Liam Brubaker. He can run a backhoe. He's done that for years. He, you could get pipes, get Liam. Liam could dig that up. Liam could put pipes in there. Liam could fix it right. So, you have the access of people here in Marion Township to help you folks do this stuff. So we are trying to use people like Leon and Butch. That's actually one of the major points of that conversation earlier in the meeting. And to put it lightly, you still have to pay them, or you should still pay them, and rightly so for the effort that they're putting in. But you have money in the budget to fix a building. It's no. It's getting a little so we budgeted <laughs> between between the stuff that's in the general fund and the stuff that's in liquid fuels. We're shooting to do close to a uh, what was it four hundred thousand? I think so. Four hundred thousand dollars in in road work this year, which is a, an astronomical sum considering it's basically two or three years worth of road work. We didn't have anything done during COVID, and the way the bid packet timing happened the year prior, nobody bid on the the packet. So we don't normally have anywhere near that volume of funding, which is why we're trying to make a concerted effort for, like you said, things that have fallen apart, like the culverts on Marion. We, we don't disagree with you about yeah, the need, I, not I'd at all. I'd love to fix all the roads. We're, we're trying to figure out how to do it. We're, we're patching holes where we can here. We're treading water with everything. And we're trying to figure out a little bit here, a little bit there, what's gonna be sustainable in the long run. All of us wish we had the funds and the money to do this. You know, I'm, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're voicing your concern. Please take a look at the numbers, take a look at the budget. If you could figure out something better, uh, again, we're willing to work with you if, you if you see or know about a program, but there's only so much we can do. And it's, it's again, it's a constraint with money. There's only, mon there's only a certain amount of money that we could use for certain things. It's not like we could go and do whatever we want. There's restrictions on how we use certain funds. Especially when so it relates to liquid fuels. I, I know nothing about this. And would you please uh, repeat the uh, initials? It was the NRCS grant. NRCS. I will look into I that. I know he's still with them. Um, I'm trying to think of what his name was. That was out when we did the project at our place. Uh, but he told us all about that. And he said at that time, the state, when that, remember we had that big flooding going all the time the other summer? And could have went out there and fixed that bridge without anything. And so there, there wouldn't have been permits. There wouldn't have been requirements around no, certain. There wouldn't have been, that was no, 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 that's, that's, that's what I said. Though. That's what I said. There would not have been permits. There would not have been a requirement for engineering. But if I can take a broad stroke statement, a lot of the problems that we're in right now is because people have done things in the past where they just slapped a pipe in the ground and it was not done correctly. Not any disparagement for other people. Times were different. Things were just uh, different. Even some of the engineering requirements were different. But it's been my view on this is if we're going to do it, let's do it right. And sometimes that means limping something along that is not necessarily suffering a huge problem right now so that you can attack other things that are huge problems. And again, I'll reiterate, I would love to fix all the roads. The, the cost component of doing that is absolutely staggering. Right. We're, we're trying to get things almost like on a cycle where we, we you know, go around town, kind of either you mm -hmm. want to picture as a clock or quadrants, and we want to address things to keep it um, updated so that we're constantly reviewing, constantly reviewing, instead of putting out small fires everywhere. We'd love to do maintenance rather than, than emergency work all yeah. the time. But it's, it's going to be a, a hard fought road to get to that point, especially when it relates to the roads. It's simply because a lot of these roads, when they were originally paved, aren't paved the same way that roads are paved today. That's why we see so much lifting and alligatoring. They're, they're basically driveways in some places. Um, there's also some road conditions, like I wanna say the, the other side of Sheridan, that it's not terribly wide to begin with, and there's trees that overhang it. So there are other external factors that we'd be fighting up against as well. We have to put it lightly, pick our battles in order to stay any semblance of ahead of things. 
Otherwise, we fall into a situation where we're firefighting all the time. Yes, Lee. First thing we need is a capable road nest. At this point, we have none. I, I will try not to take offense to that. <laughs> yes. Because if you're a road master, you're doing absolutely <laughs> the worst road master ever had in the township. <laughs> I'll, I'll once again say thank you for your comment and criticism, Lee. Your, your comment is noted, and I, I have no intention of stepping down at this time. With that said, when renewal comes, if there is somebody who is an interesting party who is qualified, they can express an interest, and we as a board will decide if that person should take over. I think... From a, a paperwork standpoint, I've been doing a pretty good job of keeping things moving, getting things cold patched, requesting grants. Um, and Lee, or excuse me, not Lee, Leon and Butch and anybody else on the road crew has been doing a good job of doing things like going out and cold patching, putting up signs. Um, we've done a, a number of those just this past year in terms of uh, uh, like no parking here to corner, dangerous intersection, all that kind of stuff. But it, it is what it is, I suppose. Um, Yes, Jenny. Just a question. Certainly. Do you um, fight the bench yourself or do you I did most of it and then I had McCarthy Engineering check it. So in the case of the, the Martin paving, I actually did all the prep work myself at zero cost to the township and had them make sure that I, I didn't miss anything or, or not cross any T's or dot any I's. So um, if we could find a, a roadmaster that'll work for the same amount of money that Peter does, that'd be great. <laughs> Because that's zero. Yes. I don't think anybody's going to volunteer to do that. I know you guys have an awful lot on your plate, but um, is Canal Road anywhere on the radar? It, it is. And, and speaking honestly, that, that's one that uh, is, is near to me. Um, I've been trying to hold off on that, and we've been looking at potentially there's some spots that drainage is particularly bad. If there's anything that we could do, like uh, I think one of the things that I had looked at was a French mattress. A lot of the road grading on that road is, is very bad. It's actually the opposite direction of what it should be. Um, this particular thing would take the, the water and channel it under the road. It's one of the things that the uh, Berks County Conservation recommends in situations like that. But I've been trying to hold off suggesting major road work and purely a pragmatic statement here. If for some reason, we still have to do the sewer. I don't want to replace a road or repave a road only to have to dig it up again. And that would be, a, a, in my opinion, a gross misuse of funds. So kind of prepping for worst case scenario, I absolutely want to do that road. It needs it, but I don't want to put good money after bad. My last name is Dean oh yeah, we, do, we deal with Dean all the time. Yeah. yeah. yeah Dean's actually one of the people that we, uh, we talk to for the, the dirt and low volume gravel road stuff. Like we talk to him frequently. So if there was anything, and like we'll, we'll happily bring it up with him, but yeah. Dean's always been very, very upfront and honest and helpful on like, hey, have you considered doing this? This might be helpful. You know, actually, if there would be a buyer that even box house or <laughs> people would have to come to James Manbeck's farm from a different fire company, they actually would have to do a lot of driving right. around. I know. And, you know. We actually did that exercise when we first had to close that road specifically around ambulances and school buses. And believe me, I don't like it, but short of taking out a loan to do it, there really wasn't an option other than to temporarily close and to try and regroup and then get it done when we have the availability and the funds. And, and just to add to Peter's comment, that's something else that I've been talking to the bank with um, and I don't know if this would, had been done previously. I'm trying to make sure that there's an annual review about our accounts and what we're doing as a township to make sure we're financially healthy. And I've tossed the, the concept to the bank, if we need to borrow money, what, what does that look like again? So that if we do have an emergency need, what is it gonna look like from our standpoint? Because it, it's all about affordability mm. from us. And of course, you know, it, it's back to everyone here in this room, we're paying for these things. And so we have to make sure we're not exceeding what we can afford to, to pay for. So, you know, there's a, a better communication over, you know, if we need to borrow money to do road repairs, if there is an emergency, what is that funding like? So 
we're trying to to get the best perspective again i don't know if any of this stuff had been discussed at prior meetings well, i wasn't certain, even a, a resident of of this area up until a few years ago certain so. certain things like specifically school road we did right. actually discuss that at length making a capital expenditure right. on taking out a loan for that and we decided against it because it would be a substantial monthly line item for the right. next 20 years right yes because in some of those grants, you can write their fees. Yeah, and some of, the, some of the grants, like uh, the uh, dirt and low volume gravel roads uh, have been historically handled by McCarthy Engineering. And that is something that they, they have a track record in. I guess you could probably actually say they're professionals in some degree for that, but they have done the prep work for those. Yeah, just, yeah. oh yeah. No, uh, and you're yeah. Paying, you're paying a grant writer to write grants produce yeah. for you and, and short of in their yep, short of finding somebody that's a specialized firm and for the record i'm not opposed to that it's just been something that mccarthy engineering uh, especially because jim mccarthy has such a, a close tie to bccd um it's been it's worked out very well for us in the past in terms of them prepping the project and getting the grant stuff in simply because they know everything that's going to be well, required about, yeah yeah, there are, but there aren't. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and with that said, yeah. like I know that was actually something I forget how long ago it came up with the playground. We had actually tendered the idea of hiring a professional grant writer for trying to request the the DCNR funding for the for the playground. <coughs> um, we've since put a, a grant package together, but around that same time, a lot of the funding uh, shrunk or more or less evaporated, and it's been very difficult to get. So as things open back up, we'll either have a, a pretty solid grant application that we've assembled ourselves, the, the board, the community association working as a team, uh, or we'll tender the idea of hiring a grant writer. I'm, grant writer knows what, yeah, what exactly. The, the mm -hmm. Yep. No, I, I completely agree. That's the, if you don't know how to do something, if it's something you can learn, that's awesome. But there's yeah. a lot of times where it's good to hire a professional. That's right. what they do. They know it better than anybody. Right. I can say from my limited experience of looking at some of the grants, most of the stuff is entering data. So there isn't much writing per se to do. Mm -hmm. So it's just if it's kind of checking the boxes with things. So a lot of the stuff that that we have had to work with is just does it does it fill the need? And and you just click on that. Yes, is this the need? Is this need? Is this what the funds are going to be used for? So there's there's not it these things aren't too in depth so far as far as the items yeah. that we've both looked at especially so. like the dcnr one the packet that i had helped don put together a while ago it was pretty basic it had the like the maps the the needs uh the drawing that mccarthy engineering put together pictures of the space and really just kind of a rationale of the need it's, it's a, unlike a lot of government related things it, it's it's a form it's a template but there's there's really not a whole lot other than a couple of spots where you can freeform and add things like pictures and some text. Um, obviously things like the uh, at sewer grants, they're gonna be a lot more involved. And that's something that we would absolutely hire uh, a specialized firm, whether it's McCarthy or an, an individualized grant writer. That sort of thing is something that uh, I'm not even gonna put on any airs of pretense about trying to do that because that is not within my wheelhouse. I don't wanna take any chances with that. I think that's that's the last thing I have on comment. We kind of went on a tangent there. Oh, Lee. I'm just trying to do about the culvert up in my neighbor's place here that keeps getting flooded. Now I've got my motors <coughs> sitting up there ready to get dirt out again. Yep. I've and the reason you see that loader there, Lee, is because we have had extensive conversation about this. That situation with your neighbor is a result of essentially three things. The swale on the one side of the road is no longer there the property that they're building the home there that is a component of their stormwater management plan is to put that back because that swale is missing and the swale on the other side of the road is missing there is far too much water collecting to that pipe which is what's resulting in the road overtopping and sediment collecting in that pipe causing it to clog which just makes the problem worse so if it so if because we actually looked back at some of the old things when when you have the correct stormwater system in place you actually are getting less water through that pipe by having the swale like if you look at the the profile of your yard there's a little bit of a, an indent there 
that used to be much more pronounced. Water coming through, any water coming through that pipe would have to be channeled away from your home. Because that has relaxed over time, it's basically just shooting straight into your property. Right. And so, so, so there's no plan to clog that pipe. I can't um, clog that pipe because it'll overtop the road. Who told you you could clog that pipe? Who? If I may ask, because that, that anybody. Pretty much told to take it from myself. Okay. Whoever told you that should not have told you that. Um, but I am, I think I'm legally in my right to when I need to keep water from flooding my house. I'll defer to the attorney on that one because I, I don't I, I don't like to see anybody's house flooded. Just for the record, as person to person, I want to do whatever we can do. But from a municipality, both swales are outside of the right of way. The only thing I can try and control is that pipe. And for, unfortunately, just shutting off that pipe is not an option. If we do that, all the water that normally tries to travel there is going to dam up and it's going to either try to infiltrate through the road, eventually resulting in a washout, or it's going to just dam a little bit over top the road and then run into your house again. So if anything, you're not solving a problem, it's just delaying it slightly. So now that there's a driveway there on the other side, now running down the driveway, running down the road, flooding the road, running down my side of the road, and washing out my driveway. The, the swale that has to go in there, I don't know what stage they're at with that, I'd have to check, but the swale for that is gonna be a huge element on controlling the, the water that runs off in that direction. And are they gonna fix the cement? Like the, the actual cement on the pipe. The head wall on the pipe, yeah. yes. So what I've asked uh, Butch on the road crew to do is to excavate that out, yeah. make sure that the pipe is not oh, clogged. Yeah. And then we're gonna look <clears throat> at what we have to do in terms of getting a replacement head wall. If it's a situation where we can straighten the existing, if we have to replace it, that is within our power as the township. That's within the right of way. The next thing and the reason that digger is out there is we're gonna excavate a small portion and put some rock immediately after it so that the water is allowed to collect and drain to settle in an almost like basin sort of format rather than just shooting into your yard. I brought I brought this up every every week yes. since you and I talked. Yeah. And I understand that. And, and I wanted in fact it's on my list to bring up tonight. Yeah. Uh, I thought we were going to have McCarthy go out and look at that and at least give him some temporary that was the ask at one of the prior meetings was to supply right. a, and for what it's worth, I apologize if you didn't receive any sort of thing. We asked. I actually called McCarthy and spoke to whoever came out with that last year. Okay. And they told me, they couldn't tell me what they came up with, but I would have to contact you guys. Okay. But so they did. Mm -hmm. was it, was it last month or the month before that? One of the, one of the more recent months, it's we actually, we came to a consensus to have McCarthy engineering essentially give you a letter that explained what the situation was and make some best suggestions as like you as a homeowner, we can't, it's not a full engineering drawing and there's certain things that you're going to have to do, but here's some of the things that you could do that would help severely reduce the impact of this. And like I said, the, the only thing that we really have in our purview is the actual road itself and the pipe and trying to make sure that that works the way that it's designed. And in the case of the property owner across from you, making sure that the necessary stormwater design is in place so that the water traveling off of that property that has been creating the problem is allowed to uh, dissipate over a longer span and not be funneled into that pipe because that's essentially what's happening now is you're getting all of the runoff from that that particular area and it's getting channeled into that pipe and rocketing into your home do we know when jim's going to go out and look at this can you, I know he's on vacation this yeah. week, but please bring it up I'll, because I'll follow up with them. Every time it rains, these poor people get flooded and it's, yeah. there's gotta be at least a temporary situation that we can divert some of that water out of there. You may have to do some things in, in your own, on your own property. Yeah, we, and, and that may, that may end up being part of this whole situation to take care of it, but there's gotta be something that we can do at least temporarily to solve this, not solve it, but let's at least limit it. See, because I feel for you. I, I, mm -hmm. I I've, I've, I've had six or seven inches of water in my basement in an old right. house that I owned, and it's, property, it's the most unpleasant the property, thing ever. The only portion that is our responsibility is the road, and we're for for better or worse. There's only so many things that we can do, right. and that's that's a double-edged sword. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing we can't go in and unilaterally enforce you to do something on your property. 
In the case of somebody building, that's one of the rare opportunities where we can make that sort of ask or requirement, especially around like stormwater management. The, the benefit being is that the person across from you was building, otherwise it would unfortunately be a uh, civil matter between property owners from damage from one side to the other. We can't just block the pipe off as much as that may seem like a solution. It's only gonna create other problems. It may solve something in the short term, but you may also then find that road washes out within the next couple of rainstorms because of all the water that is allowed to seep into it. What's the purpose of that pipe? It's to prevent water from collecting there and overtopping the road. The goal is to- Yeah, but it's sending it across the road so that it sits, so that it sits on the other side. <laughs> yeah, that's- my, my understanding That's, of this, you know, I'm not an engineer, but my yeah. thinking is, okay, we're, we have a pipe to take it off of this side of the road, but now we're sending it to the other side of the road. I don't understand. Yeah. That. My limited understanding of this, because disclaimer, I'm not an engineer is, and from driving out and seeing it and seeing pictures is it is moving water as rainwater runs off. It is preventing it from collecting in that area immediately aside of the road. Um, McCarthy is, you, you know, somebody went out and looked at it and we've had discussion about this before. If at any point somebody said like, just take the pipe out, I would have take signed off on that yeah. in a second. It's, it's easy enough to close the pipe off, but that's not been the case. That's, that's been a situation where from an engineering standpoint, too much water, to put it lightly, is being allowed to congregate to that pipe. And then the water coming out of that pipe is allowed too clear of a path to your house. Isn't there a way to divert that water in a different direction? I think the, Jim needs to go out and look the at swale. this period. The, 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 <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't want to see that happen. No, I, I, for what it's worth, I don't want you to have any problems, septic tank, basement, or otherwise. Off the top of my head, I don't know that, that answer. <laughs> It's, it's got to be happening soon. Right. Yeah, I mean, they got to do it anyway. So tell them to speed it up a little bit. Well, if you're saying about the other, the other end of the pipe, that's something we're, we're going to do. I'm sending people out from the road crew to do it. No, he's yeah, about the swale. Oh, the swale, yeah. Right, again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Because it's private property, we can't. Right. That. We can't dictate to them their timeline or their course or whatever. The building permit until they do it. And 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 everything is in place for everything to get done. I can't make them do it any faster. Yeah. I I don't know yeah. the I don't know yeah, the I legal aspects. Do us a favor. Could you maybe do that a little bit quicker? Oh no, they're they're aware. aware of it. That yeah. was specifically one of the requirements in the building that was built in to make sure that the stormwater was remediated properly. Sure so, yeah. my off. so did you say that the property was out there already to look at it previously? Yes. 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 Okay, and what did they say then? They advised that it needs a swale on both sides. There, there used so, so to be. They need to create this, or recreate the swale that was there that washed out along with the new swale on the other side of the property. So by creating swale on both sides, that hopefully will remedy the situation. But it was there and it washed out. So isn't there another problem then? No, no see, it's, swales, it's time and erosion. Yeah, swales swales yeah. are essentially just a hill that prevents okay, water. I yeah. Swales, yeah. I'm and, just saying, if everyone did everything according to all the engineering, there's still a problem. Well, no, there, no, no, no. there's a number of things yeah. that could have happened. Just the slow march of time. And at some point, somebody, at, Previous property owners may have decided I don't like mowing this the way it is and flattened it out. Like there's any number of things that could have happened that led to this. What happened is so all the water has to come through there for all the dirt in the field. Mm -hmm. It actually built my yard up. Yep. But if you're telling me that there's still gonna be water coming through that pipe, it's not gonna take my septic, it's gonna take my neighbors in the back because it's already around the back of my shed and flowing down the The engineer has indicated to me that with both swales in place, there's still going to be water going through that pipe. Otherwise, the pipe wouldn't be there, but it's not going to be anywhere near the volume that you're getting right now. So. Can Jim send them a letter and yeah, let Jim, them know was, exactly what is needed, what's going on? They're in the dark. And yeah. I'm 
That was that was actually the ask. My, the you know, I, I've never considered myself an impatient person, but lately yeah. I'm becoming very impatient about things that aren't getting done. Yeah. Okay. Never so, got email from you, from Milton. It took me calling and all but screaming at somebody to get the response. Yeah. Now it was you know, it was like a month ago. Yeah. 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 Even the homeowners were aware that there was a problem that needed to be addressed, and so on. Okay. I just emailed you pictures about the last room we had. Yeah. I, I forwarded those on to everybody that's on the board and the McCarthy. Right. Yeah. yeah. We have talked to people from the state, so we're waiting to see what is there any Is there any way to trench that out on, on their side and drop some stone in there and try it. no on the, on, not on the private property yeah on the on the side of the road certainly we we, we own part a part of that we, road we have the right of way yeah. but in order to do that we would have to go into private property like the way the pipe crosses and exits it there's not the geographically there's just not enough space to do there's that. not enough room there to just dig a small trench and put some stone in it and not get without, it away from there not without going onto their property can and we do it with their can we do it with their permission it's, it's, there are some things you could do that would help like there might be some adjustments but like like i said the swale on your side and like i said from the, the pipe standpoint there are some there's enough space that we can dig out the end of the pipe and try to create a state where the water is allowed to collect and seep rather than running why couldn't that section of road be closed off to work on if you're not allowed to sit the equipment on the private property oh, no, no, no no it's, no, it's, no, it's no. not the, the equipment being on the private property it's the actual like in order to trench that Right. and put any kind of stone in it, we'd actually be digging on private property. I'd have to look on, I'd have to look on the road. I want to say. Actually, that's not true because when they did that at our place, we fought the township because it's your water running on their property right. and it's your responsibility. So you go to the homeowner and you say, what can we do to help you guys solve this problem? I, I asked the attorney that specific question almost exactly and was told that it is a matter between I, I can't comment on that, but I actually asked that specific question because and I know it it may seem like there's inaction there. There's a lot of stuff going on. And if there was a breakdown in communication, I sincerely apologize for that. Um, that's that's my that's my question though with their permission can we dig there we'd have to we'd be spending public money on private property right? that's that's where it gets dicey it's like i don't have any objection to like sending push out with the backhoe the problem is we're spending taxpayer funds on somebody's private property yeah yes yeah uh everyone everybody we're, we're going to try to keep this organized and civil. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. I got a question for the attorney. Do they have the power to pull a permit on the building that's being built right now because the swell is left on? Yes or no? That's something I can look into. I can't get the answer out right now. Not off the top of my head. Okay. That's all I want to know. Because if they can pull the okay. permit until that's, that's done, then that'll solve part of his problem. Well, I think we could ask them to please well, act on it. Yeah. Let's add, I think we can ask them to act on this a little sooner than later, and that's probably should have been done already. Yeah. I don't think anybody's asked them yet. So, well, I mean, they, they know that was actually structurally part of the conversation around the permits. Like they're, well, they're yeah. intimately but aware. But that may of that be the last thing on their mind, and, and they don't realize the problems that they're causing. Maybe they'll act on that a little sooner than later if we ask them to. Yeah. Yes, Roy. Hundred foot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Yeah. So, Roy, I'll double check. And for what it's worth, when I looked, I think the right of way was like five or ten feet on that. It's whatever the standard is. If, if there is something, like I'll, I'll make a broad stroke statement. If there is something that we can do as a municipality, we will gladly do it. But a lot of the things that we can and can't do, again, like I said earlier, double-edged sword. 
it's good that we can't just go in and tell people you need to do this unilaterally. On the other hand, it's kind of bad sometimes because it kind of hinders the things that we can do or can't do. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, and that's the pipe. There's too much water going through the pipe. And because the other end of it is clogged up, it's causing a dam, which is why I would not recommend, and the engineer did not recommend taking that pipe out. If you take that pipe out, that water has nowhere to go except up over the road, like it did in that last heavy rainfall event. It's, it sound like a second, uh, you know, you can't stop. Yeah, it's, it's something that we are looking at. And like I said, I want to get this fixed. We'd have to cut the entire road out and reset the pipe. It may. Okay. What was that? I mean, we could. The problem, the problem is, as he indicated, it's the dirt has settled there. So if we dig it out, that may be something that we do. In all honesty. Like if we find, I don't, I, I'm, I'm open to out of the box suggestions. I really and truly am. Okay, so let's say you make it across the street. Yeah. I regrade my yard mm -hmm. to get the water to go away from my house. Yes. But I flood the guy behind me. Now I'm in trouble. You wouldn't be in any more trouble than the other property owner is. Not to mention, you're now giving the water that much more distance to infiltrate into the ground. And I'll, I'll be the first to say, if, if there is any reason that both swales go in and there's still a problem, if there is additional things we can do, like it may come to the point of us having to cut something out of the road to remediate that problem. That's a pretty drastic thing, but I'm, I'm not opposed to doing that. It's the reason that it's not one of the upfront options is like we had talked about with the culverts. It's a pretty substantial cost to do that. Right. But, but, but isn't that substantial? But, but here's the problem it's property to property. We've gotten feedback from the engineer telling us that there's only a limited amount that we are responsible for. And at the, the, what I'm understanding here is currently it is not an, so much of an issue for the township as it is from property to owner to property owner. So that's the problem that we're having here. We need to get some more information from the engineer to determine what is our responsibility with respect to this flow of water. It may be a property owner to property owner, and that's, that's a matter outside the township. We're gonna get more information and do what we possibly can do. I don't want their basement flooded. I don't want anyone's basement flooded. If that's something that's the responsibility of the township, we're gonna address it, we're gonna take care of it. But right now, so far, the limited feedback we have gotten from the engineer is that it's a property to property issue. It has nothing to do with us. And if it's a property to property issue, then the homeowners have to take care of it. Whether they have to pay for repairs on their property or take it to court to sue the other property owner for not mitigating the circumstances. So let's say they go through with this plan and they don't create the swell according to the stormwater plan. They don't do anything, then, then they do have to sue them and then the township well, would be able to, to specifically to that because, specifically with the building because right. it's in the plan if right. they don't comply with that then right. we we can take action right. against that that's something that we can tangibly right. act on but let's say nothing ever happened let's say that person never built anything and it was purely you know something a flow of the water from their property onto their property just because it comes over or you know, over the road, and let's say our engineer gives us the opinion and says, this is not a township issue that has nothing to do with the pipe. It's a property to property thing. And this is what we're trying to determine now, what we can do. Well, and that's right. great. Well, right. question, I guess, is that there, it does Right, but we have to figure out like why it's there, if it's functioning, if it's serving the purpose it was meant to. So without the pipe, would the flow of water be even worse? But so like two houses down across the street, out on my side, right. say five, ten feet off the road, it's cut in like this to hold the work back. And, I, and think that's, I think that's right out of the right away. And I would be curious yeah. to see the actual flow of the water would come at a slower rate, even with the ground system we had, than it does coming out of that pipe. 
I don't know if anyone has actually seen the videos of that. Oh, I, the water that I, was I, actually, that's why Yeah, I, I've could, seen it. You could go rafting. Yeah, I've, it I've, comes out of such force, which, and you, I think it was you I spoke to last mm -hmm. year, and you said this is so not the township's problem that um, that it's natural water flow. It's not natural water flow. It's, you disturb, not you personally, mm. you disturb the natural water flow with the, the pipe under the pump. So if funnel it down. So if we took away that funnel, it would it would just cheat over the road. It would either build up at the road and infiltrate it the road, or it would come over. And now the road on my side, my grass. Let's level with the road. Yeah. Now, now I yeah. Yeah. So now it runs down in front of my house and down my driveway. Yeah. We're, so we're, we're talking about how that yeah. kind of flow. Yeah. Down. We're we, we're like, going to go back to the drawing board. We have to have the discussion with the engineer. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Three years ago, can we? Yeah. Can yeah. we prioritize yeah. this? Yeah. Let's let's yeah. get Jim out there as soon as he's back from vacation. Yeah. Get him out there. Have him give us a an idea of what needs done, not only on for them. For the people okay. across the street and anything that the township can do to help them alleviate the problem. Okay. I've yeah. been talking about this now for four weeks that I can remember yeah. and nothing every week we talk about the same thing. So Jim needs to get out there and do it. In fact, while I'm on it, the roads at Stonecroft, those need to be mm -hmm. inspected. And he's, I know he was on vacation or he's on vacation this week. He wasn't available another day that we wanted to do it, but this stuff that needs to be prioritized. Agreed. We pay Jim a lot of money. I think yeah. he can bend his schedule a little bit and try and help us out. Yep. I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, and I got to call Stonecroft to see if they have availability on, on Wednesday in the afternoon. Uh, that was one of the days Jim McCarthy had indicated. Yeah. So I'm hoping we can, good. we can get everybody lined up. But it, well, good. While he's here on Wednesday, have him go over to their house. Yeah. And take well, a I mean, it's, it's a stone's yeah. throw away so yeah. we can travel over. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Do have one person working for McCarthy Engineering? No. It's, it we've, we've had other people go out. And in certain situations like this, because we, to, not, to, not to disparage anybody else at McCarthy Engineering, but we want to have the A-team on it. We want to have somebody who is the, the absolute... The A-team's on vacation. We always have her in the next week. And if we can rectify something this week for this gentleman, why not? Yeah. So and, we, so McCarthy okay. decides whenever or whoever or so, whatever, they decide to come back. As, to as it relates to this week, I will double check the right away to make sure that there wasn't an error in communication on the actual setback. Because I, I will say with absolute surety, if it's a situation where it extends far enough where I can send one of the guys out with the grader, they'll be out that same day. The problem I run into is I, for legal reasons or just accountability about taxpayer money, I, I can't spend money on a private property. It's, to put it lightly, yeah, well, yeah, that's what I mean. That's a question. Yeah. So as Scope yes. Yes. Either A, yes. Telling them, get this done. Yep. B, pulling your permit, or there's no occupancy permit. Yeah. And I mean, it's that simple. And, they get that they are not going to get what they want. They get what you want. So to put a fine point on it, like I'm not, I'm not real big on pulling permits if they're complying with their plan. However, if they get to the point, like the occupancy permit, like you had said, if they have not done the things that they need to do, they would not get the occupancy permit. It's that simple. So yeah, I'd have to look at the schedule. Yes, but there is that's that's a component of any building that goes up. Did they have to have a runoff? Water, uh, uh, water runoff. Yes, the stormwater management plan was filed. Okay, and that said they have to have a soil, right? Co correct. And, and that was specifically re uh, reviewed and approved by the engineer. It seems like the only problem for having here is that the soil on the other side and this poor gentleman's yard being full of salt. Yes. You know, like I said. The initial part of this conversation is the problem exists in threefold. The swale on the one side, the pipe being clogged and having too much water going to it currently, and the swale on the other. Those three things that were part of the original design are what kept the house and any of the surrounding areas from flooding previously. Because they have degraded over time, we found ourselves in a situation where it, it is a, a comedy of errors between those three things. And if there is anything that we can do, like I said, at some point, we may have to go the drastic route of relocating that pipe or re-channeling that pipe. We're gonna try to exhaust the other options, the more traditional options first, if we can. And just to reiterate, I apologize for the breakdown in communication. Um, I had called you at one point. I know there was some email exchange. You had sent things to Jim, but we have actually asked that maybe not a full engineering drawing because that's, again, that's a use of private 
like uh, taxpayer funds for private, but a simple enough drawing of here's where the swale used to be. If you're going to do anything, this is where you should focus your attention on. That, that ask was made, so I'll have to find out where the ball got dropped in that respect, because uh, much like Jim, Jim has been very vocal about this. I don't want to see anybody's basement get flooded. Yeah. I don't want to see my basement get flooded or your basement or anybody else's. I don't want to see that sort of thing happen to anybody, but we're not, we're not all powerful. There's, there's things that we can do and there's things that we can't. One next question. Certainly. Am I responsible for the bulkhead on my side? No, no, that's, that's us. And that's something that I've asked uh, Butch on the road crew to go out and look at. Unclogging the pipe, excavating around the head wall to see if we can reset it or if it has to be replaced. It has to be replaced. That's the kind of stuff that comes out of our road work budget. And then while it's excavated, like I said, putting in some of those stones that you may see at like um, pipe riprap and stuff like that, pipes that are near roadways or off of gutters on the sides, that it's, it's specifically geared around diverting and slowing the flow of water. Lee, Lee, I can't be everywhere all at once. Lee. That's the reason that we have a road crew and they're very good at what they do. Yeah, you're supposed to be telling the road crew what to do. I, I did he that. Does. I do That's that. Exactly what he That's does. Cool. Okay. Okay. Again, comment Thank noted. You. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. But yes, we're 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 gonna do whatever we can to help you guys out. And I apologize. I mean, I'm still new to the board. You know, we're gonna keep on top of it. Jim's gonna give Jim McCarthy a call. We're gonna, you know, get things done and we'll keep you up to date with it, okay? Can I sorry? In writing. In writing, ab ab absolutely. Sure. If, if it would be desired, we can, we'll, we'll obviously send you an email because it's faster, but we can actually mail you a physical letter. Okay. Yeah. We'll just keep note of, yeah. right. we'll just keep note of when, when we contacted people and, and what the brief conversation was and, and keep on following through. And then I, I'm assuming as with anything, Jim McCarthy is going to come up with a final solution as with respect to what we can do and make a polite suggestion of what you guys can do. And, and that's all that we can do at this point. So yeah, but I believe, yeah. I believe we actually have a, if we don't, I can get something, a written commentary. Cause I did actually ask the attorney specifically about what we can act on. And the, the comment was, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, the attorney in the room, um, Kozlov Stout advised that it's the, the water runoff is not the part, not party to the township. It's the two property owners. Otherwise, there would be other things that we could do. And we're trying to enforce the things that we can do, which is namely the swale on the one side and remediating, remediating any clog or sediment or anything. I don't think it comes back to it's not natural water. It's not natural well, that, it, that, 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 we're, we're going we're to get that question answered. Yeah. 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 We're, we're going to get that question answered and we're going to see what we can do about that particular issue. We've got a bulldog on it. Don't worry. Yeah. Did we yeah. did we notify the the people that are building the new house? Just politely ask them to put the swale in. Yeah, ask them if they can escalate the. Yeah, the part absolutely. Of the project. That, that's that is one of the things. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So, so I, I'm, I'm willing to admit that if we can maybe replicate that, like if we can take a, take a stab at trying it, I'm not one to, to shy away from testing a hypothesis. If we know we're going to have a rainstorm, we go out, we drop a couple of blocks and watch what it does. If it doesn't flood the way that it has been, I'm certainly willing to go back to the engineer and say, I need you to revisit this design. It's a lot, it has a lot more credence to it when I can say, I've seen it, it doesn't work this way. It may look that way on paper, but it, in reality, it doesn't do that. So that's something that I'm, I'm willing to do. I am sure Irene is willing to do, Jim is willing to do, that if we have a, a, a pretty heavy rainfall that we're anticipating, we'll come out, we'll block the pipe off and watch what it does. I got yeah. <laughs> well, if uh, I know Jim, Jim, you sent some to Jim yeah. and Jim shared with us. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, I know, like, just rainfall-wise, commentary for a second, we have gotten a lot of rainfall. Like, even just isolated storms, the rainfall has been higher than it has in the past. That doesn't really explain the problem, but it does compound it. So, the only thing I can say as a takeaway is we're, we're still on it. We'll pivot and tactically adjust 
based on some of the things like, for example, the right of way, if the right of way is wider than was originally communicated to me, that opens a lot of options for me. And if I have options, I'm happy to do them. Okay. I don't have any other comments and I think it's your turn, Irene. Um, just briefly, we had talked about applying for credit cards on a couple of uh, meetings ago, I'll say in May at some point. So um, just doing a little bit of uh, research, if we apply to like an outside company like um, Capital One or Chase or whatever, um, we have to give our social security numbers and we have no control if we want to pull the cards. So I looked into the Amazon. We were talking about getting credit cards because we're all having to use our personal credit cards to pay for items. So for example, I have to pay for permits every month that come through on my personal credit card and then write a check to get reimbursed. Um, and then yeah. there's well, gas and there's some other items. That, one thing to add yeah. to clarity around that, yes. there are there are certain things you like the, uh, the underground credit. tank insurance fund. It's not a huge amount of money, but there are certain things that will only accept credit card or online payment. They will not do physical check. We're, we're in a, a state where some of the agencies are trying to go paperless. Yeah. And that uh, creates a problem when you have a, a place like a municipality that is very much pen and paper. So, can't, so can't we use our tax ID number? No, you, you have to have a credit card yeah, payment they, for it, something. Yeah. So at a prior meeting, we talked about getting credit cards for the township. So after looking at, and I, I guess I want feedback from everyone, after looking at some of the options, I looked into Amazon, you have to have Amazon yeah. Prime account. We don't want an Amazon Prime account. It's not something mm. that we order from, and I don't want to pay $129 nope. a year to have that account. So um, through Fulton Bank, I think that's our best option. We do have to give them our social security numbers, but they don't pull a credit report on us. The advantage of going through um, Fulton is if there's a change in anyone as far as using the uh, credit card, if there's someone on the road crew that's no longer on the road crew, board member, etc., all we have to do is go to them with meeting minutes and say, this person no longer is an authorized card user versus going through a whole nother process with uh, a company. So we don't have to worry so much. It sounds terrible. So I'm going to roll mm. with the card. So I have the application here. If, if we want to go ahead and go through with it, then I know it was myself and you and Sue, and I think it was Don and Butch that mm. we had approved on prior meetings. So just as a, you know, yeah. if you guys and want to understand a little bit more. For the record, the limit on those cards is, would be very heavily controlled oh, yeah. in, in the sense of the, the road crew in order to put gas in, they would have a very low limit. So right. that it would only be able to be used for functionally gas, for right. things like getting and, gas. And the card will be kept in the, in the, at the office and locked up. So I had to put over $400 on my card for um, updating a computer program that we didn't have a choice. It needed to be updated. And every month I'm putting like $100, $200 on things that can only take credit cards. So it's frustrating because there's a lapse in time between, you know, getting reimbursed. Even though I am the treasurer, I still have to wait till all the checks are, are co-signed, et cetera, et cetera. But just to avoid that. Plus, as everyone else knows, you like to get cash back, we can get cash back. And those purchases can be used towards the things that we need at the township. So yeah. I, I don't anticipate it being very much, but we're also trying to um, move into the 21st century, do online payments, make things easier. It's your fault, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about it, Tim. I'll pick it up. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, from a financial perspective, I'm trying to keep things healthy within the township and upgrade things and, and keep things moving along and make it very user-friendly so that when I'm not in this position, the next person that jumps in can easily fill my shoes and not be so confused and so overwhelmed. So there's, there's quite a bit of stuff. So Dan, there's a little bit of a learning curve for some of the new stuff that's popped up in the past month or so. So, yeah. So I have the application here if you guys are interested. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, sir? No, I think I've said a lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jim. A couple things. Um, Sue, you and I talked the other day about the tax collector not being able to put her sitting hours on. Oh, the... Jim. Jim, can you face towards the mic there? Oh. <laughs> Just put it closer. That's can all. you can you talk a little bit about how she's going to? Let everybody know. I think we're just going to be able to put a notice. There's a sign right? on the door of the dates that she will be collecting taxes here in the building. Now that the it's building is open, she the, the county yeah. print uh, the county prints up and sends out the tax bills. Eileen does not do that. Um, everything, all the information goes to the county. They print them out, send them out. Um, she had to have her sitting dates into the county by like mid May, I think she said. 
And at that point, she didn't know, nobody knew if the township building was going to be open. So she didn't give them any dates because she thought the township building was going to be closed. Two weeks later, we opened the building. So um, the, the dates are on the door. Um, eventually, hopefully we'll get them on the website. Um, that's about it. You can also mail them to her. She accepts mail. Um, so. And I know it's getting late and I'm gonna open up a new can of worms, but where are we with the uh, property maintenance ordinance? So we actually have uh, somebody from Craft Codes this the evening, right this gentleman right in the front. Thank you for joining us. Um, Jim, so uh, in terms of questions, we actually have one of the, the codes enforcement officers uh, as terms of pointed answers to pointed questions, uh, this gentleman's gonna be the guy. I know that we have several properties that we've notified that they're not in compliance. Where are we with all of those? Yes, mm -hmm. we're getting yes. copies of the reports, but if we drive by and see one of these properties that we think is still not in compliance, even though they've received notices, sure. Jeff, excuse me, can you come up here? Okay, actually, yeah, actually, hold, hold on. It's wireless. The first property that that is on the list that is still open is 4050 Kennard Weiser Parkway. Okay. We know what that property is. Uh, it's difficult to get inside. Uh, we did stop by tonight. I saw there's some mattresses outside and uh, some box springs that need to be removed. I understand there's a burn pile outside, uh, which we also will address. Inside those properties, we're kind of limited as far as what we can do. Now we did get a, as we were coming up here tonight, secretary called, there was a message that came in from somebody there that is having issues inside. So we will have them sign a consent to enter and we will go in and address those issues. We can't address them in all of those because we don't have permission to enter. Okay. But we will address the ones that come to us. Um, so that's where we're at with that property. There's uh, 72 Main Street. Even though that's been reported as a health issue for some of the people that live there, we, we still can't go in? We still have to have permission. Can the state in. go in? The state, who from the state? Health department, if it's mold that's causing people to become ill and be hospitalized. Well, that would have to be, are you aware of anybody from the state that will do that? Uh, no, I mean, we have to get a search warrant. Okay. We, we can do an administrative search warrant, but it's very expensive. Okay. And we also have to show probable cause. Okay. We have to have some kind of evidence for that search. Jim, that might be because we have we do have photos on file. That might be a question for the attorney. What would dictate probable cause? For administrative search warrant? Yeah. Yeah. Can't say the top of my head. Oh no, I'm, yeah. you don't have to give me an answer right this second. So, but. so if a resident at that that initial location that you described says, mm -hmm. Yes, I have an issue and I'm inviting you into the property, mm -hmm. then you can enter in the property can. and make documentation. Okay. We so can. And they, they will sign a form. It's called a consent to enter. Where they're giving us permission to enter the property. Okay. Uh, so we will get one of those and, and get into this property that was just complained about this evening. Okay. Give him several of those and let him hand them out to the rest of the neighbors. Well, we all know what the property is, uh, but we're limited as far as what we can do inside. Okay. The only way to address that, and I know you don't want to touch it, is a rental program where you're getting there at least every two years to address those issues. But that's the only other way that you can get in there on a regular basis. You, what was that again? It was a, a rental rent, program. Rent, rent management ordinance in which you'd have to inspect rental properties periodically. Mm -hmm. That was originally talked about and decided against by prior members of the board. Is that something we might want to consider reviving? I mean, I'd like to know more about that. We, we can certainly we can provide that. you all yeah. the information. Yes, yes okay. I'd like that. You can't target individual it has to be yeah. uniformly enforced. It's going to right. have to be uniformly enforced throughout the township. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll be happy to provide that information for you. And that want. would just ensure a bit more safety for our residents. Mm -hmm. too. Yes, it would. Yep. Okay. Uh, there's a property at 72 Main Street. 
that there was a, a complaint of a lot of debris in the backyard. I also understand from one of the gentlemen who was up here that they think there's uh, chickens and different things there. So that's being dealt with. We have a property at 119 Main Street. Uh, their last notice of violation will expire on 720. So they have until the 20th of, of July to deal with the issues there. And then we have the property at 1117 William Penn. Uh, that property does have a citation issue. So that will, we'll get notification from uh, District Justice Books Office and they will notify us when the hearing will be scheduled for. So that's where we're at with those four properties. Why does it take the magistrate so long to schedule it? With COVID, it's been yeah. terrible. Yeah. We've had citations that we issued that have taken well over a year and they're, and they're not issued yet. They, they haven't set a hearing date. So. Again, my impatience is starting to show. Sure, I understand. Okay. I'll get you another cup of coffee. <laughs> I need one. <laughs> I understand. Donuts Do you have any other questions for us? I guess not. It's just uh, so again, guess, this is these are ongoing problems that have been forever. Yep. And well, again, you have to decide what you want to do with that property out on 422. Yes, yes. I, I guess I guess my question is, is kind of general. I'm just trying to think how to how to phrase it. So now violation, mm -hmm. citation, all these are issued. What's mm -hmm. the time frame that you go back to these properties and, and to see if they're in compliance? Well, we'll check those on at least a monthly basis okay. to see if things are improving. Okay. There for a while, we were going to property on- uh, Forge? The trailer the tucking park? In. Oh, the tucking uh, okay. We were going out there on a weekly basis just to make sure they did the safety repairs to the railings and the porch and the steps to the second floor because they were in terrible condition. So for about four or five weeks, <coughs> one of our guys was meeting with them every Friday afternoon, okay. just to make sure that that progressed and those safe, severe safety issues were addressed. Okay. So we are going out, but it, it, sometimes it's not a speedy process. Yeah. And I know the, the board wanted some of the letters written in a little bit friendlier tone to give people a little bit more chance mm -hmm. to clean up. And, and we typically will talk to people ahead of time before we get involved in this process, mm -hmm. you know, to let them know what the parameters are with the different letters and how this is gonna proceed. Mm -hmm. So they should be familiar with that. Mm -hmm. So we're not hitting them out of the blue. Well, I think it's time to quit being friendly with some of them. Well, it was at the behest of the board that we did that. Is there any way that legally we can start fining people on a regular basis, weekly, monthly, until they We'd have take to care of the ordinance. problems. Have We'd have to have an ordinance. In place well, then we need to look at you're that. still going to have to go right. through your local DJ. Right. Yeah. That's where the fines are laid right. at. Yeah. The way, the way this was originally laid out, Jim, impatience aside for a second, was to put a tool on our toolbox where we'd be able to help people or deal with an issue without ideally being too draconian. We, we want the problem fixed, not to beat people over the head with something. I understand that. So on, on, in some cases, I know we've sent out a number of letters. Mm -hmm. There have pe been people that have complied. Like uh, the reason I thought you were going to the avenue of that property on on Forge was mm -hmm. it, it looked like a yard sale exploded. Mm -hmm. They did an excellent job of dealing with that. They're actually mm -hmm. like, there's still some room for improvement, but they are making, you drive by that on a weekly basis. It's noticeably better. They're making a, a solid and noticeable effort to do something about it. Mm -hmm which is why we don't have them under under notice anymore because they're they're complying. My concern is the ones that we talked to have been talked to before, have been talked to a year ago, have been talked to two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, and they're ignoring us. Well, again, we have the process of the notice of violation, and then we go to a final notice of violation. And, and we're fine to keep that on an expedited process and then take it to citation and go to the district justice, which is ultimately where we have to end up because they're the ones who can levy the fines. We have to be able to show them that we gave them multiple opportunities to comply or they're not going to rule in our favor. I mean, ruling in favor or not, I think it's an important thing to give people the opportunity. 
yeah, yeah. to comply. Yeah. Well, you want to do yeah. that for your residents to yeah. a point. Yeah. To a point. And, and we like to work with people as, as much as we can. Oh, I agree. Let's give them a chance. But, yeah, but, but the ones that are just out. flat out ignoring us and mm -hmm. thumbing their nose at us, yep. I think we need to have something on the books that it's we can process. be a little bit more, get their attention a little bit more. Well, and if they're getting fined a, a little more often, that may get their attention to go ahead and clean it up. Oh, your, your system is set up for the walls of conservation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, we have to give them multiple opportunities. And then once we issue a citation, then we've got to wait to see if the person pleads guilty or not. And then if they plead not guilty, we have to have a hearing. And we could, but under the letter of your law, we could start citing them on a daily basis. But the district justices, are not going to take well for that. You know, they'll, they will push yeah. back on us and say, we do not do this until we have at least mm -hmm. a hearing on this. And once we have a hearing and if they're found guilty, you know, then they're gonna we're gonna give them another amount of time to comply. The court may order, you know, some additional time to comply. Mm -hmm. um, but then then that's when we would typically go back to them and say, all right, we're going to start citing this person daily. We're going to do it for a week. And you know, a day constitutes a new violation. And then we'll get fined every day. Okay. Thank right. you for that clarification. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Okay. And that's Thank you. kind of the process. I know it takes time. Yes. But that's the process we have to follow. I've been doing this for 23 years. And we are. And that includes taking pictures, which we include with the notice mm -hmm. of violation typically. That's in our file, so we have proof of what was there on a given date. So we like okay. to document everything that way. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you very Any much. Other thank, questions? You. Yep. thank you for being here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Jim, uh, actually, Tim, yes, sorry, certainly. Do you have a for property maintenance? Yes. Also send that to me. Yeah, so you, yeah. You, but you've looked that up. You just saw uh, Google IPMC International Property Management Code. It's on, it's on. Yeah, we'd be happy to. What was that? I mean, you just have one. Yeah, yeah, so we, we, we adopted the standard code, and there were, I want to say, maybe three, four minor changes in language to make this less restrictive on, in a lot of cases. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Tim. The noise is new. What's your name? Yeah. Tim, Tim, give a last name. E-A-K-S-K-I. Okay, thank you. So, thank so you. Tim, before you leave, I, I might have your email, but if I don't, let me know. I will I will email you the, the resources because like the, the bit that we actually enact with the ordinance is we adopt the standard and then there's a couple of small addendums. It's a very small and, document. Uh, I didn't even know you could have a meeting, so I went for the it was advertised in the Reading Eagle that was we were required to do that. I'm sorry. Right, but, yeah. that's, that's, right, but that's the legal requirement. We fulfill yeah. the legal requirement of advertising for meetings. Plus, it's also posted on the door. Yeah. Well, obviously, you find out you're here. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and and Tim, as as things start to dare I say it return to normal, one of the things that we have to rely on, unfortunately, within the community is word of mouth. A lot of times there are people, there are several sections of the community that don't do anything digital. So short of sending out a bulk mailer, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of like $600 each time you do that. Well, I, mean, I, I know a lot of people know there's noise about coordinating. Yeah. That's brand new. Yeah. yeah. That's and that's and that's something that... I mean, I mean, once a year you should put out, hey, look, there's new ordinances we did the last year. Yeah, and I'm... I, I mean, have no clue before any of the ordinances have been kept And when I asked before, they were like, yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll, we're one of the things that we're trying to do, and for any grief that I've gotten about the website, um, is to get all of the ordinances up on the website categorically. So if you ever say like, okay, what's the, what's the garbage ordinance in the township, or what's the noise ordinance, or what's the the zoning, that it's it's there at a, a really click away. You don't have to make a right to know request. You don't even have to call or email. It's just there. 
Um, and with that said, if you want anything in the time being, let us know. We'll, we'll be happy to give you a digital copy or photocopy it or whatever the situation is. We're happy to, to oblige. And, and for anyone, if, if, if please pass it on. If you don't have internet access at home, you can go to the public library. There are computers available. There is one. It's right down the road. It's a good library. It's one of the nice uh, libraries. Yeah. Right. But, but yeah. you don't want to pay taxes for that either. So, um, but, yeah. You don't want to pay taxes for that either. So, yeah. But, but you can go to the public, any public library. And I can tell you the staff there will be more than happy to help you get on the internet. Help you do your searches and, and find out the information that you want to find. They're very good about but that. But the meeting's not on the schedule, on the website. Yeah, so I had to so get. So it might have been in the newspaper, but it's no. not on the website. It's I not. I had been waiting on the administrative accounts. They set up the website, but I could not get signed in until very recently. So I I unfortunately could not post anything. I was at the mercy of sending stuff to them, like we had sent over the uh, the joint zoning ordinance, and they they put that up. From a direct action standpoint, my hands were kind of tied on that until like a couple of days ago. So I very much wanted to get the meeting schedule up for both the workshop and the board meeting, as well as um, trash collection, recycling collection. I want to start building that calendar out. I just haven't had the ability to do that yet. Can we revisit this ordinance and see if we can put some teeth into it? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to revisit anything at any time, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. And that's all I Thank have. you. Okay, uh, Sue. Is Jim finished? Yes. Yes, I believe right. Jim's finished. Um, the only thing I have is I got an email from Tulpahocken Police Secretary. Um, they're in need of parking violation paper ticket things. Okay. Um, she wants us to order them. She got me a price of okay. Um, oh. For 50 of them at Little Mountain Printing, it's $145.48. So for 100 of them, it's $152.24. Serious question. Is that, or would that not be included in what we pay for as a service? I have no idea. Yeah, I, I think I'd want to look at the agreement on that because that seems like that's that's a cost of doing business from a police standpoint. I can ask. Yeah, uh, let's, let's look at that further. I don't think we should be absorbing that cost. Okay. Anything else, Sue? No, but you forgot the solicitor and engineer. Yeah. No, no, no. I, was, I asked if you were done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I'm always last. Oh, I oh, went out sorry. of order. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, do we have any comments from the engineer? How about from the solicitor? Any comments? No. no? Okay. Thank you very much. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 9.22. Oh, actually. Yes. For the next meeting, bring us up to speed where we are with this whole sewer thing. Yeah, so we, we did actually touch on the Act 537 a little bit. I'll, I'll give a, a real quick recap for the, the sake of it being 920. Um, we had originally had open dialogue with the DEP. They were originally receptive to changing the plan focused on need and feasibility and affordability. Uh, that kind of went dark. So we had to change tracks a little bit and we're looking at making the compelling data-driven argument of need and affordability based on the income study to say our residents simply can't endure this kind of cost. Grant availability to say the grants either there or are not there to be able to support this sort of project and a recalculation of the actual cost in the plan. The, the cost figures in that are at this point a number of years old and costs year over year have gone up. Those three things will give us feet to stand on along with the, the mandatory online management ordinance with data around what the state of the systems actually are all of those things will kind of mesh together for us to make a informed decision to say, okay, is this something that is like, if we're going to get 100% grant funding on it, is this really worth fighting over? Or are we getting basically not anywhere near enough to make this not a, be a horrible burden? And should we consider lawsuits or anything of that nature? We obviously have a preference here. We don't want to undergo a huge project that's going to be an imposition on you, me, anybody else that is a, an, in, an infected or affected resident. Um, but we need to make an informed decision as it relates to Marion Township as a whole and from a taxpaying standpoint, the funds therein. We obviously don't want to do something like hard pull the plan. I know there have been people in the community that have suggested that. 
legally speaking, the law is not on our side for that. We as a township could get fined on a daily basis. Was it $300 a day? Yep. And we already got notice that if we didn't comply, they would start fining us. Yeah. So, so I mean, despite I've heard a little bit of rumblings and rumors throughout town, there's a 2011 controlling case that pretty much is similar, so similar in facts to what we have at Scary, where there was a group that was on the board. They um, put a plan to place new group came in, did a hard pull, and the DEP said, no, you're not going to do that. The facts di differed a little bit in that the, the main argument was, can we put these supervisors in jail? Uh, but the underlying, one of the underlying issues was that these supervisors went and did a hard pull on this plan. And so the DEP came in and fined them $300 a day. So I know we've had this discussion at prior meetings, if we were to do a hard pull, they would start finding us $300 a day. We would have to come up with a new plan, new engineering costs, new advertising costs, public meetings, public comments. That could take, what, a year or longer? Again, funds. I don't have the funds to pay $300 a day fine. And if you think about it, just from an from, uh, uh, administrative standpoint, do you really think the DEP wants townships doing a new plan every time there's new people elected to the board? It's like, a, a, you know, if you have kids, you know, you serve dinner, this is what's for dinner. One kid says, I don't want that. Another kid says, I want something else. And you're like, no, this is what I cooked for dinner. This is what you're going to eat. It's the same situation. They want you to comply with what you submitted, whether or not the new people like it or not, because they're going to slap us on the hand and say, no, you're going to pay $300 a day if you do that hard pull. We don't have the funds or resources to do that. So. And unfortunately, because the plan was submitted by prior prior members of the board and approved, that changes the dynamic and the things that are available for us to do. Had it not been submitted, not been approved, we'd still be in that rewrite period, the ability to write something yep. up and submit it. We really, within the confines of the, the, the regulations and the law, we had a lot of options available to us. And then we'd have different avenues to go through that in terms of like the environmental hearing board and the, like the, the challenge process when you submit a plan. All of those got taken away when the plan was submitted and then promptly approved. So we're still we're still trying everything that we can, but we're trying to navigate it in such a way that isn't going to result in an all-out slugfest, uh, unless we have to go the, the the lawsuit route, and to try to avoid fines that they can and more than likely will start levying against us because it, it would be pretty profound from a cost standpoint. So if if so the last thing we heard from them, they basically told us that you need to comply with the plan. We're winding a little. So that's where they're at. They say, yeah. We have to put in. Yeah. Prior prior to that, we had numbers of back and forth conversations. Uh, I actually spoke with a couple of them. Jim, you were on that call too, I believe where they were, I would say, very receptive to the idea that we wanted to not make huge structural sweeping revisions. The big revisions that we wanted to make was we wanted to add essentially logic into the plan around this is, if we ever have to go to a public store, this is what we would do. In we're not being mandated to go to a public store right now. Right now, we more or less are. The DEP, yeah, are. the plan that's in there says that yeah. it would be public sewer. We're saying that we want to put a plan the plan that we had discussed, the, the, they're saying we can't make any changes at all. What we wanted to do, just as, a, again, real high level here, is long-term, total long-term need. If we ever need a sewer, this is how we would do it. Here are the criteria that we would use to determine sewer. How much of a need is there? If we look at 160 houses, are we talking about six that have failed that need to be replaced or just outright bad, or are we talking 106? That coupled with cost, you can you can find a tipping point where it is financially sensible and better for people in the long term over a 20 year span to go to a large scale project like that. You, you either have a homeowner that's spending $40,000 on a sand mound or spending $30,000 on a sewer over a 20 year span. It, it makes sense at a certain point. The plan that's in doesn't take any, any of that into account. It just says we need it, we're doing it. So it wasn't so much no, no sewer, because we would get shot down because to put it lightly, if you look at it at the lens of long-term, it, it doesn't hold water. You can't quantify long-term and say on lot. Um, if, if the 
The situation in Marion was different if the lot sizes were larger and you could have an argument like there's that whole grandfather thing. If you had more than just the grandfather argument, you'd have some traction. The fact is that you, you can't even get anywhere close to say that if we had failing systems that you'd be able to replace them with anything other than holding tanks and holding tanks are not viewed as a long term, unfortunately. So, so is there a hard, do you have no information as to when Oh, we have, we have, we're, already we're already on the timetable, time so like the, the second. Right, the plan was submitted. We have to follow the timetable that yeah. was implemented. Yeah. So, so one of, I'll, for the next meeting, I'll break out the submitted plan and I'll, I'll chart out the timetable for you. I know we're, I think we have another like year or so for, yeah, okay. So one of, one of the few small victories that I had made before the other two submitted the plan was I got the funding the period of time where you go to look for grant funding extended out pretty far because one of the, the principal concerns that I had and still have is grant money is just not going to be there. No, we're not going to be there. Exactly. Exactly. And for, for what it's worth, I completely echo that. For what, what you should have and what you have thought now. Mm -hmm. you Say again? Uh, some yeah, and we don't want to see anybody have to do that. Then we're trying to navigate this in a way that we can avoid having to do that or having to incur huge costs and see the, the taxes rise as a result of it, that we're trying to find that balance there. Yes. So, so that, that, that question, we actually asked that question when we met if you're going to come to me in 10 years and say we got to put water in it, why? why? Yeah. yeah. So we actually asked about water. All I can say is that because we're going to put ice and carry with this. Yes. Right. Thank you. We inherited a lot of problems. Um, please make really good, informed decisions. Yes. This is it's blatantly obvious that your predecessors did not do that. They did not understand what they were signing up for. And as a result, the whole community is going to suffer when maybe it would have been totally unnecessary. So, you know, it's a, it's a hell of a place to be. But... Um, and it's yeah. So that, and that's there's this bottom is line right and now is they said do it. Yeah. They said, can we talk about this? And they said no. Just just to just to be devil's advocate here for a second, just to to be the pragmatist. Um, a lot of places. This doesn't make it right or wrong, but there has been a track record of places where you have to you have to submit an Act Five Thirty Seven. Like that's just a fact of life in Pennsylvania. Generally speaking, if you have this sort of area the the mode of operation was just it's going to be funded just put sewer in that's the way it was for decades a lot of that went away yeah the, the, a lot of the money that for funding sources for both of those things actually dried up i think in the late 90s so a lot of the the kind of the status quo not that anybody did anything wrong or negligent necessarily but um the status quo was to just do this sort of thing as this project and that's kind of how this originally evolved because the the act 530 that's uh, 537 that's in there now was worked on for uh, not an understatement here but decades that it was kind of an evolving thing that nobody really ever submitted nobody ever submitted and it just kind of got snowballed upon um which is where we're in the situation now because some of the considerations and the things that concern us just weren't structurally built into the plan so uh, as you put it, we've inherited it and we're trying to, much like some of the other things with the roads, we're trying to navigate the situation that we're in, in the absolute best possible way. Because as you said, I want to make an informed decision. If, and it might be a, an unpopular opinion, if we look at the, the funding sources and grants are readily available and we're able to basically do this for nothing, it makes sense. Because to put it lightly, a lot of the systems are probably in need of some work. They're probably old. Some of them may be original to the house. And that's something where we need to have the data to say, okay, from a cost standpoint, is it better for the community to do this or is it better for the community to do that? If it's better for the community to do sewer, that's the direction we're gonna try and to go and explain and help people with grants and et cetera. 
And if it's not, that's where we have to circle the wagons and go, okay, how do we fight this? How do we dig our heels in and make sure that we protect residents of the town so that they don't have a, a huge burden placed upon them or have a situation where people have to sell their house? None of us want that. No. Around the world, a lot of us are right here. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, <laughs> financially, that would be quite a burden to a great number of the folks that live in this community. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are. We're, we're, yeah. we're trying. We're, we're doing yeah. our best. Absolutely. Tom, I've got that piece pulled up if you wanted to write it down. I want to take a look at it under your, you know, your own time. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is, yes. That's what uh, was indicated is we should have the recalculated cost. It was, it was like 4.96 million, yeah. Yeah, it's just basically five. It, uh, we'll see, but yeah, yeah. It's gonna be more than five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thing cost never goes down generally. Yeah. So, okay. Motion to adjourn. Time is 9.35. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Thank you for being here.